again, welcome into our state championship coverage here today on Sports Time Ohio. Our first of six state championship games that we'll bring you between today and tomorrow. First up, the Division Six state championship, St. John's Delphos will battle Hopewell Loudon. Along with Greg Fry, I'm Al Pulowski. Welcome into our coverage here today. And Greg, when you talk about these two teams, first off, offensively, let's start off with St. John's. This is a team that has some great tradition. They're a team that loves to run the ball, and this running game has gotten them to the state title game nine times. Nine times, and they've won four times, the most recent in 05, and it's their 11th playoff appearance. They come out, out of the MAC conference, and we all know how well the MAC does in state championships, so they're going to represent this year. And it's not just their running back that can run the ball well, so does their quarterback, Wes Ulm, also a good play-action passer. Uh, great job throwing the football as well as running it. This offense is geared towards running the football, but does a nice job off of play-action. Has thrown for over 1,000 yards and run for 830. Very good job. The important thing for today for him is to control uh, the down distance really get first downs and control time of possession. All right, let's talk about the Hopewell Loudon Chieftains for a moment who are no stranger to the Division Six state title game. They were here last year. Let's flash back. Newark Catholic's Mark Ewell scored three touchdowns as they jumped out to a 28-0 second quarter lead. Had a rough day though for Hopewell Loudon QB Tyler Brown. He was pressured all day. Still he ended up with over 300 yards passing in Newark Catholic's 28-14 win. Well, they lost this game last year, but I think they came back with a chip on their shoulder this year to get back to this day to finish the job and win the football game today. Now you talk about Tyler Brown. I mean, here's a quarterback that really can do it all. He's completed over 70% of his passes this year. That is exceptional for high school quarterbacks. You see over 6'5", 200 pounds, is throwing for 42 touchdowns, and he's got a very dynamic duo of receivers to spread the ball around to today. All right, let's take a look at the other side of the football. Defensively for St. John's, they have a heck of a defensive lineman in Chris Pullman. Chris Pullman anchors that 4-3 defense from his middle linebacker position. He's going to have to do a great job pressuring Tyler Brown today and being a sure tackler with the rest of his cohorts on defense to keep that cheat and offense uh, off balance. And when you talk about a sure tackler, that's Hudson Smith for Hopewell Loudon. Here's a kid that well, has a ton of awards. <laughs> he needs a suitcase for all the awards he's won this year. Very active linebacker. Obviously going to be tested today against that strong power running game from the Blue Jays. All right, we're excited about the matchup we have for you here at the Division VI level for the state championship game from Paul Brown Tiger Stadium in Maslin. Kickoff is coming up next. Keep it here on Sports Time Ohio. Championships off here in Maslin, Ohio. You look at this Chieftains offense, they've averaged more than 400 yards per game, and a lot of that has to do with quarterback Tyler Brown and the way that he can execute that spread offense. So what will the Blue Jays do? Remember, they're a team last year that were 2-8, and eight, and because of the youth that they've had, they've been able to bounce back and get themselves back here to Maslin. At some point in time, don't be surprised if their middle linebacker, Chris Pullman, ends up playing in more of a 3-4 defense so they can spread out and go after Tyler Brown with this Blue Jays defense. Offense, Obviously, the other thing they're going to have to do, they're going to have to control the line of scrimmage at some point in time, guys, if they want to compete with this offense from St. John's. Andre, great points. That's our Farmers Insurance sideline report. Time now for the keys to the game and Greg Fry. Well, number one, and first and foremost, you've got to dance with your date. You've got to go with what brung in for the Blue Jays. That means you've got to dance with your power running game. For the Chieftains, they have to attack through the air, which they've done successfully all year. Two, get up early, and that doesn't mean get up at 4 a.m. to go shopping. That means you've got to get the lead in this game and keep it. And finally, the Blue Jays have no room for error. I think they've got to control third downs. They've got to be 50% or better, in my opinion. They've got to dominate the time of possession and they've got cannot turn the ball over and now this year they're plus 16 in turnover margin if they can get turnovers today and capitalize they can stay in the football game and win the game so there you go set for the game here today and here's our game conditions for you 35 degrees now at kickoff partly cloudy no precipitation in the forecast that's big and uh, winds west southwest at 13 miles per hour that's going to be right to left and it'll be at the backs of the team that uh, is kicking off, Delphos St. John's. Here's the officials for today's game. Some of the best in the state of Ohio working these state championships both today and tomorrow. St. John's Delphos won the toss. They deferred, so that means Hopewell Loudon has the decision. They've chosen to receive. Kicking off for Delphos St. John's is Jordan Rohde. And we are about set for Division VI state championship high school football here today on Sports Time Ohio. Thanks for being with us as we have full coverage for you today and tomorrow of all six state championship games. You know, I think a gutsy move. They, they win the toss and they elect to defer and not take the football. 
Here's Rody's kick. Kind of a knuckle ball. It's going to be fielded by Brickner. Andrew Brickner. It's to the 20, and that's it. Good coverage there by Delpho St. John's. Jay Leininger led the charge. Leininger. We're going to get our first shot at Tyler Brown. This uh, magical offense that the Chieftains have. And they're going to start into the win and see what they do in the first quarter. So Hopewell out on an offense. Tyler Brown, who is a record holder with uh, 328 completions, 3,320 or 48 yards, and 42 touchdowns, all school records. And with a shotgun and the five wide receivers set right away for Hopewell Louder. We'll see Brown do this. They'll get him the set, Greg, and then he'll check to the sideline for a play. Quick throw and an incomplete pass on the near sideline. The intended target was Miles Chapman. You will see that quite a bit where they line up and they're going to call the plays from the sideline. A lot of times they won't always get in the best play. Serpentini starting lineups for you. First of all, for Hopewell Loudon, as you get a look at the backs and receivers, Aaron Kapelka, a pretty good running back, even though uh, we talk about their passing game quite a bit. 1,500 yards and 20 touchdowns. That's not too shabby, but uh, he's probably the most overlooked guy. And there's the offensive line for you. As Hopewell Loudon looks at a second down and 10, and here's Kapelka that we talked about. Not much there, a couple of yards, maybe, to the 22. It'll bring up third down and long. Let's take a look at the defense for Delpho St. John's. Tyler Heason on that tackle. First up, the defensive lineman, Ben Seaver. Defensive tackle to uh, keep an eye on really everybody there. We talked about Chris Pullman in our open. And there's the defensive backs as Hopewell Loudon has a third down and eight here now from the 22. Round to throw. And incomplete, almost picked off through behind the receiver, Jay Yost. And it's a quick three and out for Hopewell Loudon. I believe Joel Pullman might have got a finger on that throw. I think it was a pretty good throw by Tyler Brown. He saw the curl lane, threw it early and on time, and Pullman either got a finger on it or at least disrupted the, the passing uh, angle from the receiver. Let's take a look at it again. Hard to tell, but Jay Yost unable to come down with it. And they're going to have to punt in first possession. Good stop by the Blue Jays' defense. Bergfeld and Leininger are deep. Here's the punt for Hopewell Loudon. Jay Yost, fair catch call for it at the 50-yard line. And made there by Tyler Bergfeld. So Delpho St. John's will start on offense at midfield. Very good field position, not even a minute into the ball game. And we're scoreless here at Paul Brown Tiger Stadium. 27-yard punt, no return. We'll see your field position's key in this game. And the wind, obviously, a factor in the first quarter. Here are first look at Wes Alm. 15 touchdowns through the air. And now also a very good runner. Yeah, second leading rusher on the team with 830 yards. Jordan Leininger, the running back with over 1,100 yards. So first and 10 from the 50. Rodolfo St. John's and the Blue Jays come out with the option. Here's home. It's a nice move gets down to the 42-yard line. And that's what we were saying, Greg. This kid, Alm, he's just a good athlete. Can throw, can run. Great to have a player like him. Here's the Serpentini starting lineups for Delfo St. John's on offense. Uh, we just talked about Wes Ohm, Jordan Leininger. We talked about in our pregame hit. Here's a kid uh, that really can run the football, and that's a great offensive line. Very good offensive line. And four sophomores on an offensive line. You don't see that too often. This late in the year in week 15, four sophomores starting on the O-line. Really amazing. Second down and two now for the Blue Jays. They'll stay in the I formation. Shift here is Jay Clark, the tight end, lines up on the left. First down. Now we told you about the run, and there it is. Jordan Leininger up the middle, 11 on that carry. And the Blue Jays with a couple of nice plays early as we take a look at the Hopewell Loudon defense here today. Now a defensive line again. Pretty big up front for a Division VI school. They are pretty big, and uh, they're going to have to be quite active there. And Hudson Smith, we see Holman, Brickner. And the defensive back of Chapman and Brickner and Jay Yost playing both ways as a receiver and a DB. First and 10 for the Blue Jays from the 31. Oh, oh, it wide open, but incomplete. Boy, Wes Holm had some time to throw, and the intended target there was uh, Avery Jay Liner there. Actually, yeah, Jay Liner. Jay, and he was open. They had him on a post. It was a pretty good read by Wes Holm on play action. They're trying to go for the home run right away, and he had it. And this is one of those situations where just a little bit overthrown, hit him on the fingertips. 
Pretty good throw by Wesson. You always want those back as a quarterback, but early in the game sometimes a little bit of nerves. Just miss a little bit. Adolfo St. John's will tell you they passed to keep the opposition honest. That was a pretty good pass there. Second down to 10 now from the 31. Option play. First down. Room outside. Out of bounds inside the 10-yard line. Wes Holm with the big carry there, 22 yards. And uh, the Blue Jays, Greg, running that offense well. We talked about Hudson Smith in the open and how aggressive he is from his middle linebacker position. And twice now, Wes Holm has had, Wes, had Hudson Smith at his right here, 55, comes at his feet, misses him, makes another defender miss. Jay Yost misses, and Wes Holm impressing me, running the football. I really liked watching him warm up. But you could tell a very confident quarterback, throws the football quite well and a very good runner. Between him and, and Leininger, Leininger, big physical running backs, actually. Double tight end set here on first and goal from the nine. Just one receiver out wide to the right. And got it, touchdown. And St. John's takes the early 6-0 lead. Just a little bit over two minutes into the ball game. The team that coming into this would have to be the underdog. Credit Coach Schulte for winning a toss and taking the football. Oh, I'm sorry, electing to defer. They get they get a three and out by the Chieftains offensively. They get good field position at the 50, and they go right down the field with their running game and stick it in, opening drive. Jordan Rohde on to attempt the extra point. Out of the hold of Jay Leininger. It's true, and it's a 7-0 lead for Delpho St. John's the 944 mark of the first quarter. So a key drive. Uh, we talked about their running game in, in the outset, and exactly what happened. They ran the ball and then finish it off here with Jordan Leininger. Touchdown number 17 overall on the season, and the Blue Jays did exactly what they wanted. Great. Look at the blocking up front. You see Wes Holm gets a block downfield there as well. He pitches the ball and gets up in the hole, and but the guards in the center there, Alex Record, Derek Kloss, Jay Grubinoff, all did a great job right at the middle. Untouched goes Leininger in the end zone. An impressive drive, five plays, 50 yards, a minute 18 seconds. And it's Jordan Leininger, a nine yard touchdown around. There he is to put Delfo St. John's ahead. Seven nothing over Hopewell Loudon. And similar to last year when Newark Catholic got on top first, uh, Hopewell Loudon down by seven, but this is a team that can throw. So uh, being down is not gonna bother him too much. No, but I believe it's uh, that was an important drive for Delphus to uh, put seven up early and make a statement that, you know what, they're, they're not an underdog in their eyes. Uh, despite the fact that they're young, they're not playing like it today. And tremendous opening drive. We'll see if uh, the Chieftains can get their offensive gear here in the second drive for them. That was Matt Brickner, who's deep for Hopewell Loudon here on the kick. As Jordan Rohde has it teed up at the 40. So 7 0 Blue Jays at the 944 mark of the first quarter. This one looks like it's going to head out of bounds. It does. So that'll give Hopewell Loudon pretty good field position for their second offensive series of the game. Now, Hopewell Loudon going three and out on the first one. Mentally, Greg, does that does that do anything to an offense like this, or is it a hey, business as usual? I think it's business as usual for them. I think they've just got to make some adjustments. I could see right off the gate that uh, the Blue Jays defensively were going to drop a lot of guys uh, and bring pressure from the secondary and, and force Tyler Brown to be very patient and dink the ball down the field. So we'll see uh, if he can make that adjustment in the second series and be patient to run football. And we'll get a sideline update from Andre Knott in just a moment. First and 10 from the 35-yard line for the Chieftains. Tyler Brown, a quarterback, throwing for over 3,300 yards this year. He'll be throwing again. Screen pass. That's Yost. It's blocking. First down and more into St. John's Delphos territory across the 50 to the 49, 16 yards on the completion. And now let's head down to the sidelines for a Farmers Insurance sideline report. Andre Knott. If you want to talk about versatility, it's all about number 11 for the Chieftains, Andrew Brickner. So far in the playoffs, he has a TD rushing, receiving, and he has one via interception. So he's a guy right now that the Chieftains want to get the ball to as they get turned this offense trying to get going. All right, Andre, first and 10 from the 49. Jay Yost, there is 50. Eighth catch of the season. It's a heck of a lot of catches for a high school wideout. This is Kapelka on the run. 47 yard line, a gain of a couple perhaps. So pull out and still can run the ball a little bit, which makes that pace passing game so effective, Greg. You can't just sit on the pass here. 
Uh, no, you can't. <laughs> Kapelka's a very good running back. 1,500 yards and 20 touchdowns, 5.9 average. On any other team, that's a great running back. And this team, he's overshadowed by the uh, exceptional numbers by the receivers and by Tyler Brown. Kapelka flanking Brown to his left on second down and eight from the Blue Jay 47. Kapelka again with room. Got good blocking and near a first down. Let's see where they mark the football. Tackle on the play. It'll be close. I think he's got it. Where you're going to see the guard to tackle pull there. And Hudson Smith, number 55, makes a great block, opening up a seam for Kapelka. Now they're going to have an official timeout for a measurement on the field. That'll stop the clock with 8.27 to go in the first quarter. St. John's a 7 0 lead on a nine yard touchdown run by uh, St. John's uh, running back Jordan Leiniger. It's his 14th rushing touchdown of the season, 17th overall. Well, yeah, she had it. Told you, Greg. Not a problem. <laughs> hey. my, my question to you, Al, is how long is it going to take if that scoreboard to be 7-7? I don't think it's <laughs> going to be too long. <laughs> That's for sure. We expect to see some offense here today. There's Bob Calatrulio, the head coach for Hopewell Loudon in his fifth season, a very impressive overall record. And, oh, by the way, as a Chieftains head coach, 64-5. Not Doesn't lose many it. games. No, no. So first and ten now for the Chieftains at the 39. In motion goes Matt Brickman. Ron will throw. Too high for Yost. And the pass is incomplete. Line. That'll make it second down. Good coverage on the play as well by defensive back there. Dylan Dancer. Well, he had him open, but there was pressure up the middle, which forced Tyler Brown to step up in the pocket, did get his feet set, and just overthrew that one a little bit. That's a, that's a big play if he completes the pass, because there was a seam for Yost on his uh, curl pattern. Second down and 10 at the 39. It's Tyler Brown, he's got Kapelka in the backfield with him. Three wide receiver set. Play action, Brown, deep, Yost open, got it. Pulls it in inside the 10 yard line for a first down. What a catch by Jay. Yost goes up and gets that one. 29 yards on the completion. Yost with his second reception of the day. And Hopewell Loudon moving the ball on offense. Great throw, great catch. That's set up by the, the running game by Kapelka earlier. They go with a little bit of a counter boot there with a fade on, by Jay Yost on the outside. Well executed. Numbers on Jay Yost coming into today there. First and goal at the nine, Kapelka. And inside run, big roll, touchdown. Kapelka from nine yards. For an extra point away from this one being tied at seven. Don't let them pass the game for you. They can run the football. And Kapelka's gonna get the first touchdown, I should say, and the first touchdown of the day for, for uh, the Chieftains offense, because there will be more. So Aaron Kapelka with the score. And this to tie the game up, Jay Yost, the kicker. Round the holder, extra point is up, and it is good. So we're even at seven at the 7.40 mark of the first quarter. We'll take a break here on Sports Time Ohio. You're watching coverage of the OHSAA Division VI state title game. Seven all, Aaron Kapelka just tied it up for Hopewell Loudon. Yeah, but it is a great feature. Yes, it is. Seven all the score at the 740 mark of the first quarter. So well, we saw the Blue Jays do on their first offensive series and drive what they wanted to and hold well out on their second. Did what they wanted to do. So we'll see what happens here as the next sets begin. My advice if you're sitting at home watching is to put your seatbelts on because I think we're in for a great ball game. We've seen a lot of offense already by both teams. That's Jay Leininger deep. Will kick off to take a look at the Hopewell Loudon scoring drive. Kept off by that Aaron Kapelka nine yard run. Here's the kick, and it will be fielded by an up back there. Up to the 30 yard line. Uh oh, a big hole there for A.J. Klausing. And he'll get it out across the 40 yard line. 28 yards on that return. And once again, the Blue Jays with excellent field position. Started their first drive at the 50, this one here at the 42. They've done that all year. They, they love to have good field position. They create turnovers to do that. And 
obviously showing the special teams there. Klausing running through there fearlessly. <laughs> Yost had to make the tackle after kicking off. Well, some the quarterback, number 11 there, breaks the huddle. Come out in the eye formation. First and 10 for the Blue Jays. Call the line of scrimmage the 42. Jordan Leininger, the tailback. This one will be the fullback, Matt Blake. We'll get a few yards there. Well, we've seen some offense from both sides early here today, Greg. And uh, first off for the Blue Jays, here's Wells Ulm, who can run the ball as well as he can pass it. And also uh, their key running back, Jordan Leininger, finishing things off for their touchdown drive right here. That's what they do is one of my keys was to dance with your date. And uh, right now, those two guys are running the football effectively, and they mixed it into Brinkman on the last, the first play here for a four-yard gain. Second down, call it six at the 46. Reininger. This is off a couple of tacklers, gets up near the 50-yard line. Jay Yost came up and made that tackle. It's a free safety position. If we go back to the first drive, Ball went up top for a post over top to a Jay Leininger and didn't hit him. But one of the keys here is to watch Yost. If he's got to come up and make a lot, a lot of tackles from his free safety position, those deep passes, that play action pass, that'll be there. We'll see if that'll come up here on third down and two. So running formation, oh, out of the eye. And shifting. Lining her on the ground, lowers the shoulder, and it's near a first down. We'll see where they mark the football. It's going to be awfully close. Very good penetration by the chief D line there. And Leininger shows he shows good vision cutting that ball back. It's designed to go left. You can see the penetration. Miles Chapman made the pullback right there, number 10 for Hopewell Loudon, and he's going to be short. It'll be fourth down and less than a yard from just outside the 48 yard line. As you get a look at Leininger's stats coming into today. Jordan Leininger averaging over six yards per carry, Greg. That's uh, very impressive. In a game like this, the way, the way this matchup looks to me, I think Delphus needs to go for these fourth and shorts to keep the football. You don't want to punt it. They you are. Got, you got to take the risk. Just five on the down clock now. Home gets it off. Leininger in trouble. He didn't get there. Hopewell out of defense held. Once again, in on the tackle, Miles Chapman with a host of white shirts, and the Chieftains will take over. Well, if you're Delphus, you've got to think you could be able to get a half yard or a yard in this situation. They're going to measure. It certainly didn't appear like he was going to get it, but good penetration. But that whole right side of the oh, yeah. defensive line. Eric Hoover got the initial penetration in the hit. And there he is, Miles Chapman, who made a couple of big plays here defensively on the last two. Yeah, he looks like he actually lost some ground there, Greg, but they'll measure anyhow. I don't think there's much of a decision to be made here. I think he's yeah, short he by over it, a yard. Get it, yeah. well, it, it, it appeared like it was a toss sweep, but really that's just an off-tackle toss right there. It's a power running play. And once again, great penetration by the Chieftains. But I don't disagree with the call at all by Coach Schulte and his staff. I think you got to go there. So give the ball back to the Chieftains here in a 7-7 ball game with 5.15 to go in the first quarter. They'll take over at their own 49-yard line. Tyler Brown in the shotgun. Aaron Kapelka with them in a four-wide receiver set for Hopewell Loudon. Brown with time. Over the middle, great catch for a first down at the 35-yard line. That's Andrew Richter for 16 yards, his favorite target. Richter with his 82nd catch of the season. And, and that's not a well-thrown ball. It fluttered a little bit, thrown into the wind. And I tell you, between him and Yost, their stats are real because of the way they make catches with their hands. Watch him go up and get this. Knuckle ball into the wind, no problem. Big first down. Now the hopeful Loudon can move the ball down the field quickly, and that's a school record. Those 81 catches, now 82 with the one he just made, Andrew Bricker. Now split up, up high, wide to the left, but it's Kapelka on the ground for a couple. Covered up over there by Dylan Dancer, the defensive 
Player for Delphos St. John's. Well, anytime you've got a, a flashy offense like this, you've got to give credit to the offensive line. I like what I'm seeing so far of the guys up front. Hudson Smith make a lot of plays on the offensive side of the ball, blocking Eric Hoover, Aaron Arbogast in the center position, Ian Klaus, the left guard, Ian Coon. Those guys are very good. Not a lot of size up front, but they've got great feet, and I can already see very sound technique. Second down and eight for Hopewell Loudon. The ball's at the 33-yard line. Brown with play action. Quick hitter outside, it's Yost, kept the feet in at the 25-yard line, should be enough for a first down. Just running that timing out cut right there, a play they've run a number of times, I'm sure. Make it look easy. And they'll move the chain, so another first down for Hopewell Loudon as you get a look at Todd Schulte, the head coach for Delpho St. John's. In his 10th season at the helm, 96 and 31 overall, another very impressive coaching record. And, and this is an impressive program. Delpho St. John's always in the mix, not just for a year or two. It just seems over their history. Every few years, they're in there. They, and they've excelled this year with a young football team. Tyler Brown under center, out of the eye this time. Kapelka, another hole that closed up quickly at the 22-yard line after a three-yard game. Tyler Hasten delivered the big hit there. That was a big hit, <laughs> Tyler Hasten. Whew, that, that hole looked like it was going to be there, and Hasten came from the backside and delivered a haymaker, <laughs> I should say. <laughs> now watch it again. You think these kids at the high school level can't hit? Well, here's 50. Oof. Impressive. Nice job reading what's going on there by Tyler Hasten coming down the line of scrimmage from his defensive end position. Second down and seven now from the 22. Brown back to the shotgun. Up with the snap, and he has to fall on his back at the 29-yard line. It appeared that was going to be an inside handoff, Greg, to Aaron Kapelka. And Tyler Brown, uh, I don't know, maybe took his eye off the ball? Play action now. It was play action all the way. Guard was pulling, and uh, they're running a drag by the tight end. He, you can see he did take his eye off the ball. He's just going to make a fake. A little bit impatient getting out of there, but does the wise thing and falls on it. And he had guys open, too. So spot the ball back at the 28 officially. It'll be third down and 13. 13 yards for the Chiefs. This pass happy offense is not a problem. It's not a big deal with that. Five receivers here. Delpho St. John's will only send three. Eight in coverage. That's going to have to run. Nobody available. It'll be stopped well short of the first down around the 23. Well, that time you drop eight men into coverage, uh, it's going to be hard to find somebody. Well, he might have had some guys open, but Joel Pullman comes up and flushes him and uh, ends up making a tackle. He does pick up about six, which puts him in an interesting position, which, uh, given their offense, good chance they'll go for it. They will. On fourth down and eight at the 23, they need to get to the 15. And he's got it. You know, Jay Yost and Rickner, as well as they run the crossing routes, and you got a zone defense. Good chance one of these guys will be up on a, on a, on a bit of a dig or a curl. Belka back in there and running back. Brown will roll out on fourth down. Receiver open, got it. First down at the 12-yard line. Once again, it's Jay Yost, his third catch today, and a first down for the Chieftains. Well, they, they line up. They like lining up Brickner and Yost on the same side. And Brickner runs an arrow route. Yost runs the curl, and it forces the defense to pay attention to Brickner. And Yost comes wide open in the curl. Great throw, great catch in traffic. Move the chains. So first and 10 now at the Blue Jay 12 in the last minute and a half here of the first quarter. 7-7 ball game, but Tyler Brown and the Chieftains driving again. Kapelka on the run. Most of yellow shirts there. David Odenweller on the tackle. We see that play quite a bit. Uh, a lot of teams in college run that play. They're, if they're running the counter with the back on the same side. So he, he takes counter steps in the guard tackle pull and nothing doing that time. Good stop by the Blue Jays defense. And got a whistle on the far sideline. And uh, we have a timeout. We have an official timeout on the field. Tyler Hayson is off of that. Probably an equipment issue the way it looks. Which is a great way to substitute, by the way. Yeah, when you need personnel in there differently. Dylan Dancer came in for him and Nate Webb. That's right. Just replaced uh, that always works. Jay Leininger with the fake chin strap injury. <laughs> Second down and 10 at the 12-yard line. By the way, we need our nickel defense now. <laughs> you never did that, did you, did you coach? Uh, no, no. no. You got to play by the way. Their wide receiver set for Tyler Brown out of the shotgun. 
Fires for Yost. Got it. Is he in? Touchdown. Chieftains go up 13 to 7. Jay Yost, his fourth catch of the day, is the 11th touchdown of the season. Alec, I'll tell you how impressed I am with Jay Yost and Andrew Brickner. This ball, it's a slant pattern. He's got Brad Hoffman draped over his back. The ball's thrown high into the wind, and Yost has come down with it. Not only that, he reaches the ball out to get it in the end zone. Yep. Nice play by Jay Yost, who's also their kicker here for the extra point. Tyler Brown hold. It's good. It's 14 to 7. Jay Yost. Now with 61 catches on the year, 11 touchdowns. But how about Tyler Brown? Each touchdown pass he throws sets a new school record. This his 43rd of the year. They just put Yost to the field and put him in a one-on-one -on -one situation. Pretty good coverage. And Tyler Brown, he's just confident, throws it right in there. Look at that catch. I mean, that's not an easy catch with a guy and Brad Hoffman on your back. Yost knows how to put it in the end zone. Now, Jay Yost, impressive numbers today for the wide receiver from Hopewell Loudon. And uh, Hopewell Loudon, who lost the state title game last year to Newark Catholic 28-14, is up 14-7 with 33 seconds to go in the first quarter here in the Division VI state title game in 2008. So how do these teams get here? Let's take a look. First up, Delfo St. John's and their road to Massillon. Arlington carry Ada, Lehman Catholic, all down to defeats. Delfo St. John's, there was challenged in a couple of these games. Uh, they were, and I think uh, late in the year they lost to Coldwater in, uh, in week seven. You can see Hopewell out how they got here. Obviously some big wins to beat Columbiana, Mogador, Norwalk, St. Paul, and Malvern. And what you can see there, they're scoring a lot of points out all the way through their season. And Norwalk, St. Paul, always a tough team. A good program down there as well. I was going to go back to Duff with St. John's. They lost in week seven to Coldwater, 38 to seven. But Coach Schulte felt like that was a, they, they played better than the score showed. And they've gotten really better since then. That game gave them a lot of confidence that they could hang and they could play. And we've seen it so many times with the lower division teams as that kick by Yost is out of bounds. When the lower division teams play the higher ones, even if you lose those games, it toughens you up for the rest of the season. It, it really does, because you know you're, you're going to be mismatched. It's certainly, you know, when you've got so many guys going both ways in a smaller squad and, you know, going against a bigger team. And that, and that, you know, it's interesting how coaches take a lot of confidence from those games. And a lot of times the score doesn't show you what really happened on the field. And, with this young football team, they grew up, and since then they've rattled off six in a row. And here they are on week 15 with a chance. So the Blue Jays now on offense, trailing 14 to 7 with 33 seconds to go from their own 35, first and 10. Here's the last scoring drive by Hopewell Loudon. Nine plays, 51 yards, 445, and Yost, 12 yard reception from Brown. Option play, not much for all. Got a yard. On the tackle for Hopewell Loudon was Aaron Arbogast. When Hudson Smith is the one that took away the angle and Alms oh, he's was shaken up. And this is not good news if uh, Alm has an injury and might be a cramp. He's lying face down. We'll see. So an injury stoppage with 18 seconds to go in the first quarter. I'm not sure what he did there, Greg. I. I Hudson Smith took away his angle. He, he was coming outside. He stopped and, and went forward. It looked like Armour Guest might have hit him low. I don't know. There's another look at it. Maybe got the, he might have got the wind knocked out. I'm hoping that's what it is because he landed. It looks like he landed on the leg. Yeah, it doesn't appear from our replay that he would have done anything to the ankle or knee. He dropped the ball. Yeah. I'm hoping he got the wind knocked out because that's one he can bounce back from pretty quickly. Nice job by our great crew here with Sports Time Ohio giving you those replays. So 14 to 7, the Chieftains have the lead as they get a look at uh, Wes Ohm, their starting quarterback, who right now is lying face up. So uh, and perhaps he just got the wind knocked out of him, and they need him. They do need him. And, uh, you know, as a quarterback in a game like this, you don't want to be on the sideline with an injury or anything. You know, he's going to come off under his own power. He'll have to come out for a play. The good news is Wes Ohm looks okay, so we hope it's something that's not serious. I'm guessing it's one play. Jay Leininger will be uh, the backup quarterback, but he might not have to take a play here. So they wind the clock, and that could be it for the first quarter. There's Wes Ohm getting some consultation there from the 
Delphos St. John's coaching staff and uh, training staff as well. The final seconds tick away here in quarter number one. Well, we've seen some offense, to say the least. The Chieftains have a 14-7 lead over St. John's, who scored first, but Hopewell Loudon strikes back to take the lead. Hopewell Loudon trying to avenge the loss in the championship game last year. Can they do it? We have three more quarters of football to go. Stay tuned to Sports Time Ohio. Hopewell Loudon leads Delpho St. John's 14 to 7. And let's get an injury report brought to you by Farmers Insurance from Andre Knott. Right now, the injury right now with Alm is a left shoulder injury. They think he's going to be able to get back out here and play. Right now, he's doing some tosses on the sideline, but it's the left shoulder that he landed on awkwardly that's bothering him right now. All right, Andre. So now the starting running back, Jordan Leininger, is lined up in the shotgun. He's going to be the backup quarterback, and we'll see plenty of this as he'll run it straight from the snap, and he got about five yards there. Most teams are comfortable in the uh, wildcat formation. It's pretty easy to put Leininger back there. He can throw the football a little bit as well, but see if Wes Alm comes back. And fortunately, out with the quarter, he was able to sit out a little bit and rest up. Look at the disparity here in passing yards, Greg. It's no surprise. I mean, it, uh, Delphus, they're not going to light it up throwing the football. They don't want to. First quarter, they ran it nine times through for one and missed that one. But there will be a time and a place when they have to throw the football, like now. Third and five at the 40. High formation. Here's that throw home. Pressure. Receiver open, but it's picked off. Under throwing ball, and Hopewell Loudon comes up with the turnover. Justin Holman intercepts at the 50 and returns it to the 47. West Holm tries to throw. They're just going to run a counter boot. He's got the fullback out of the backfield, and he's trying to over throw it over top of Justin Holman. Tries to put some touch on this. And Holman's going to go up and get it. Great catch defensively. Look at this. Goes up, get it. Week 15, that's when you want to make interceptions on defense and give your offense a short field. Ill-advised throw right there. Now you saw Matt Brinkman, number five, was the intended target for the Blue Jays. He was appearing open for a moment. But uh, getting up there is big. Justin Holman. So first and 10 for Hopewell Loud and Kapelka on a toss sweep. Nice gain, about five or six on first down. And it seems, Greg, the Chieftains have their choice. Their passing game is working and their running game is working. They can do whatever they want at the moment. Well, that's what they, that's what they do. Uh, they're very effective running the football. And as I said earlier, I'm very impressed with their offensive line. But, uh, you know, when you're balanced and you can do both effectively, the game of football becomes quite fun. Right now, they're in great rhythm. It's Kapelka's eighth carry of the day. He has 33 yards on the ground. Ground in the shotgun and second toward the 41. Kapelka again for only a yard this time. It's the uh, defense for Delfo St. John's tightens up. Derek Klaus on the stop. Also there, Tyler Hasten. Tyler Hasten comes from his backside, and anytime he sees the, the guard tackle pull, he's going to chase and make the, try to make the tackle from the backside. But you got to be careful with that. Uh, if you continue to do that, they're going to run play action right at you. So third down and three from the 40. Oakwell Loudon has scored the last 14 points. Looking to add more here on this drive. Tyler Brown to the shotgun. The motion goes Matt Brickman. Quick hitter, incomplete. Fastball there to Miles Chapman. And that'll bring up fourth down. Now, a lot of times, once they get on the other side of the 50, Greg, it's four down territory for the Chieftains almost automatically. Probably, the, you know, the wind is at their back, and this ball is thrown. It's got to be thrown to the uh, up the backfield shoulder there. Excuse me. He throws it to the upfield shoulder and almost intercepted. Jared Hoffman came up and uh, disrupted that. But they're going to go. That'll be fourth down and three at the Blue Jay 40. This crowd comes alive here in Massillon. For the Chieftains, out of the eye. The belt to the tailback. Oh, look at this. Play. Indeed. That's a busted play. I don't think there's any flags, are there? Nope. So Tyler Brown took the snap. Nobody else moved, so a mix-up on the snap count. A loss of two yards, and the Blue Jays get the ball back on downs. Let's see what happened here. Yeah, a bit of miscommunication right there. Aaron Arbgast snaps the ball to Tyler Brown and nobody else moves. And at that yep. point, it's too late. And Tyler Brown tries to improvise, but uh, an important defensive stop for the Blue Jays. So uh, Delfo St. John's will take over at their own 42. And once again, Wes Ulm is back in at quarterback. So the left shoulder 
Not going to keep him out of this game. Backs it enough. Receiver wide to each side. Give it to the fullback this time for two, maybe three yards. That's Matt Brinkman, his second carry. They'll use him several That's times throughout the game on the rush. Hudson Smith. Well, Wes Alm's going to have to. He get, he's fortunate, dodged the bullet after the interception that uh, the Chieftains didn't cash in on that one. One of those plays, you go go back to that, you got to be patient in a game like this. You don't, you don't want to punt it to him, but you don't want to give him the short field either. The play action pass was not there. I think they're going to have to throw the football with him on the earlier downs when it's less predictable because they'll have guys open. Gain of a yard, second down and nine. Wes Ohm will go to the shotgun. Reiniger with him in the backfield. From the 43. Oh, that's the run. Hit at the line, no gain. Good coverage and the rush eventually got to him. Ian Klaus makes the tackle for Hopewell Loudon. Just trying to throw the flood route to the wide side there. Really pretty good coverage by the Chieftain secondary. And Wes Alm smarter this time, decides he's going to tuck it and go. And Klaus is going to chase him down from the back side. Nice, uh, nice tackle by Ian Klaus. Got to go as a sack, loss of a yard. So third down and 10 at the 42. We saw Delfo St. John's take their opening drive 50 yards for a touchdown to lead this one seven to nothing. But since then, Hopewell Loudon has had the better of it thus far. That's all in the shot, or rather he'll go under center. Three wide receivers set in motion to the right. Comes Leininger. On the throw, Leininger got it. First down in Hopewell Loudon territory at the 46-yard line. Very good pickup right there. West Hall could throw the football. 14 yards on that throw. And they, they put Leininger in motion, and he comes across on a crossing route. Nice hole, good throw. Good catch, and Miles Chapman's going to come up and put a lick on it from his free safety position, but not before they get the first down. Big hit right there. So that's going to give West Elm some confidence. Yep. Blue Jays with the first and 10 now with the 46. And the football again. The Brinkman, look at that hole. Spinning down to the 26-yard line. Impressive run for Matt Brinkman. And the tackle. 20 yards on the carry, Greg. Just around the fullback belly. Nick Steve. Right up the middle. They're going right at the Chieftain's defense. See the penetration. Anytime you get a tackle penetrating like that upfield, you're going to have a seam. And he's in the secondary. Yost misses the tackle, and off he is in the secondary. Big play. First and 10 now at the 26 yard line for Delpho St. John's. There's Matt Brinkman, the fullback. You see, he gets. More carries than a typical fullback at the high school level. Wind up in the eye. Make it to him this time. Ulm with the option out, to keep it. Out. Big hole. He'll go all the way. Touchdown, Wes Ulm. We're an extra point away from being tied up. 26 yards on the scamper. Blue Jays bounce back after turning it over. They get a turnover of downs defensively from the Chieftains and go right back down the field. And Wes Ulm, that shoulder's going to feel a little bit better now. Stretches out the option, sees the scene, cuts up field. And he's in the end zone. Jordan Rohde on to attempt the extra points to tie the game up out of the hold of Jay Leininger. Extra point is up and good. And we're even at 14 in this Division VI state championship game. We'll take a break. We told you this was going to be a good one. We've seen some offense early. We're tied at 14 in Massillon. Have you noticed they're all the same guy? Yes, it would be hard not to. Enjoying the art? Yes, very much. Yeah. Are you the artist? I am. Oh. Who is Steve the Doer? Doer. He's my farmer's insurance agent. Really? He gave me the coverage to save my studio. You know. Hors d'oeuvre, Steve on a stick, salmon skin Steve roll, quiche a la Steve, Steve in a blanket, baklava a la Steve. What are you doing? Well, the name scared me. The skin, Steve roll. Stealing these letters to Santa was a great idea. Ho, 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 dear Kathy. I know you want my circle from Alltel so you can share unlimited calling, but you're not getting it because you are bad. <laughs> <laughs> I just wrote you stink. <laughs> Pencils down, boys. Come on, guys. Mm. Oh, oh, finally, the last one. Oh, hey, we got more mail. Oh, oh, yeah. oh, oh, oh. My circle. With unlimited calling 25, 10, or 20 numbers, it's the perfect gift for the whole family. And now get the latest touchscreen phone, the Dell, from Alltel.
Farmers Insurance agents across the state of Ohio would like to extend their thanks and appreciation to the more than 330,000 student athletes, their coaches, school administrators, families, and fans in attendance today, and even more, watching on STO for their involvement and support of school-based sports. School-based sports and extracurricular activities are vital to the health of each Ohio community. Through year-round involvement, Farmers is proud to support Ohio communities and the 101-year tradition that is the OHSAA. Good luck to all of the participating teams and their fans. Farmers Insurance gets you back where you belong. There's the Delfo St. John's scoring drive. Five plays, 58 yards. In two minutes, 29 seconds, quarterback Wes Ulm capped it off with that 26-yard rush. And for Wes Ulm, his 14th rushing touchdown of the season. He's passed for 15, and he's rushed now for 14, so he's accounted for 30. Pretty good numbers for a quarterback. Here. Very good, and he got us, as we talked about, um, off the air, he got his first completion on that drive, which was very important. They, they mixed it up a little bit. Uh, they ran the football well. They mixed it around. Brakeman had a nice run up the middle, and Wes Holm obviously busted it to uh, run the option play. And boy, it's uh, I'm impressed with their offense so far. They're doing what they want to do. And uh, boy, we got a ball game. We sure do. 14 all here with 7.16 to go in the first half of the Division Six. State title game here on Sports Time Ohio. Jordan Rohde will kick off. Going to have a holder there, Jay Leininger. We have winds uh, around 13 miles per hour. And uh, it's really whipping down there on the field. It's a factor. This kick will be returned by another man. Yeah, Andrew Richter got outside. And he's tackled out across the 40-yard line. A good field position for Hopewell Loudon. And Andrew Brickner, not your typical upback there, Greg. Uh, he's, no. of course, the starting wide receiver. And Excellent athlete. You don't want to give him a lot of space. <laughs> Anytime he touches the ball uh, in the open field, he can make things happen. So the Chieftains will start at their own 41-yard line in a 14-14 game. So we get a look at this one more time here. Well, the, the contain man for Delphus blows the contain, and that's always a scary thing when you're a coach. Very fortunate he didn't make uh, more of that than the 41. 21 yards on the return, which Originated at the 20. Brown from the shotgun on first and 10 with a pump fake and the deep ball. He had him open, but overshot his receiver over there on the far sideline, Miles Chaplin. Now Tyler Brown committed to that throw a little bit early. They had the pump fake. They went after Brad Hoffman. They've, they've thrown that short route a couple times and just a little bit premature. He had him. Yep. Not often that Tyler Brown misfires. Coming into today's game, he completed on 72% of his passes. That's a school record. Today, he's six for 11 here in the state championship game for 93 yards. Kapelka on a draw. Six to the 48-yard line. He'll be a couple of yards short of a first down. Well, it's nice to have a running back like Kapelka where you can go to that draw in second and 10. It is, and it's so difficult on the opposing side. The linebackers. Chris Pullman and Joel Pullman and Matt Breichman, you see that pump fake, and it freezes you. Next thing you know, you've got a guard up on you. And Kapelka's picking up eight. Third down and two. Tyler Brown in the shotgun. That's Kapelka with them. Play action. And incomplete. That was intended for Andrew Brickner, and oh my goodness, what a hit over there by the left quarterback, Brad Hoffman. Hello! Man. As I like to say, uh, ear hole. He throws this on time, and he knows he's gonna get hit, but Brad Hoffman says, you guys gonna pick on me, I'm gonna bring it. Brad Hoffman, a senior, 5'10", 180, brought all of it there. They, he, they've been attacking him quite a bit, and he, he answered the bell that time. Wow! <laughs> Jay goes to punt, Jay Leininger deep. Yeah, he, my goodness, that was a hit. A skip snap, but no rush. So Yost fields and gets it away. But it is unreturnable. It takes a chieftain bounce inside the 15-yard line and will be stopped right around the 12 with six minutes. And 10 seconds to go before halftime. 44 yards on the punt, no return. And now the Blue Jays in a 14-14 game. We'll start here. We should mention you talking about the wind. The Blue Jays are going into the wind in the second quarter, and they've done well with that so far with one touchdown already. And I think it's important now, Al, that they control the clock and they want to get the better field position, move the chain some. Let's show you the school maps here, first of all, for Delphos St. John's in Western. 
Ohio, just uh, 102 boys at the Division VI level from Allen County in the Midwest Athletic League. And Bascom Hopewell Loudon with 115 boys in Seneca County in the Midland Athletic League. And uh, Hopewell Loudon, another great season this year as they had last. And first down, Ohm will run for the Blue Jays. The quarterback takes it up across the 15, stopped down near the 17 yard line, about five yards on the carry. Well, they've been effective so far on first downs. They've had a few third longs, which they don't want to be in, but if they can be effective on first downs, it makes it a heck of a lot easier with that offense to move the change. You get the second and five situation. That's exactly what they're, where their comfort zone lies. How big was that touchdown for the Blue Jays on the last drive to where now it's even? They don't have to worry about playing from behind. I think if they were tied at halftime, they'd be very, very tickled. High formation here on second down and five at the 17. Option, on with room. Looking some moves. Finally brought down across the 35-yard line. Boy, I tell you what, Greg, those fakes that he makes on that option play are very impressive. It's lethal when you've got a quarterback. I've seen some pretty good option quarterbacks here in the last uh, month. Uh, he does a great job of holding on that football. And you can see the defensive tackle collapsing. And Hudson Smith can't get there quick enough from his linebacker position. And he's in the secondary. 17 yards on that carry for Ulm. Who is now Delfo St. John's leading rusher? Seven carries today, Greg. 80 yards and a touchdown. That's the quarterback. Well, that's what they want. And, and Jordan Langer, Langer's been quiet in this tailback position. I'm, I'm going to assure you he's going to get more carries. No trouble with the snap there. Oh, maybe but a few, though. Nice job getting positive yards. Perhaps four in which uh, looked like at the beginning that could be a disastrous play. Yeah, it looked like the snap a little bit early. And he still picks up a couple yards. Here it is again. Yeah, he bobbled the snap. You see he's confident with the football. He, he lets it hang out there quite a bit, but always uh, gives your coordinator loose some hairs when you see a quarterback uh, hanging a ball out like that. But he's pretty good with it. Pick up a four, second down and six at the 39. High formation, a receiver to each side for the Blue Jays. Give it to the fullback this time. First down up to the 45 yard line. First down for the Blue Jays. Another solid yards. carry by Brinkman. They're just going to run the trap up the middle. Right guard's going to pull. Big seam right there. Look at the blocks by Wrecker, Clausen. Driven off up front. You get your fullback downfield five yards without getting touched. That's a good thing. And we have a timeout on the field. With four minutes and 11 seconds left here in the first half, 14 all the score. We've seen a lot of offense, four touchdowns already between these two schools. And as we talked about in the pregame, it's what we've seen, contrasting offenses. The Chieftains love to throw it. Now Kapelka has been running pretty well off the throw here in the first half. St. John's loves to run it. And they've been doing just that. As you take a look at the rushing yards, that's going to belong to uh, Delfo St. John's. And look at their, uh, their play selection too. St. John's with 18 rush and three passes. And let's take a look at the last drive for Delfo St. John's, which tied this ball game up at 14. When that last drive started with a defensive stop, they got the Chieftains on a four and out, or stopped them on fourth down. A big third down pickup with a throw over the middle. They're going to run it up the middle to Brinkman, who's been more involved in the offense here in the last couple drives. And here's your touchdown. Wes Holmes going to cut it back, find the seam. 26 yard touchdown run to tie it up. Nate Farmer's sideline report, Andre Knott. You guys talked about in that last drive, what's making the option work is that they've been able to get the fullback going. Greg talked about it. We've done so many games watching the option over the last couple of weeks, and teams know that they have to take away the quarterback at some point in time, and that's been tough for the Chieftains to do. We've even heard of some teams this year, this year practicing without a football to go against option football because you have to keep the keys to stop the option, and so far St. John's is having a problem with that. And three more yards there on the carry for the quarterback, Ulm. That's all the ball fix. Like a point guard in basketball will show you the empty hand. He'll whip the ball around and picked up a couple there. It'll be second down and eight at the 48-yard line. I just see a lot of confidence in him right now, which is what you need in a state championship game. You need your quarterback to be making plays and confident with the football. From the I formation. Ulm with the option first down. Breaks through to the 40-yard line of the Chieftains. 
12 more yards, and, and Wes all really running the ball well here in the first half. He was a shoestring away. Jay Yost is going to get his, uh, I think his left shoestring to pull him down. Otherwise, Mom's going to be gone again. Just look at the defense collapsing on the fullback. He takes the ball out. Two guys tackle the fullback, and next thing you know, he's in the secondary. So Ulm already with 98 yards. Looks like he'll cross the century mark here in the first half. First and 10 for the Blue Jays at the Chieftain 40. Stay with the eye. Ulm again. Well, he's over 100 now as he got across the 38 down near the 37-yard line. Even when it seems great, he stopped at the line. He just finds a way to kind of spin ahead for positive yards. Well, the defensive ends, I can tell you, for uh, and linebackers for the Chieftains are having fits with him right now because they, they can't, they, they've got him. You know, they're, they're unblocked and they can't tackle him. Three yards on that carry to put him over 100. Don't forget, coming up at the half, we'll send it back to our STO studios in downtown Cleveland. Mark Schwab, Jim Isabella will be there to talk about this one. We'll also have highlights and stats for you. Halftime report brought to you by Farmers. Wes Holm over the middle. Great defensive play there using the ball side hand. Jay Yost, the intended target was Jay Clark, the tight end. Jay Yost has been very aggressive as a free safety, and he has to be in this when you're facing this type of offense. He's just going to come up, come over the top with his right arm and knock it down. Great coverage. So third down and seven at the 37-yard line now for the Blue Jays. In a 14-14 game, 2.26 to go before halftime. The Blue Jays have all three timeouts left here. The Chieftains have two. That, I'm sorry, the bad thing about that incompletion is it stops the clock, which the, the Blue Jays want that clock to keep running. If they score, if they turn it back over to the Chieftains, they don't want to get the time. A one for three on third downs today. Ohm with no one to throw to. Trying to improvise. Got a receiver. Found time. Behind him, incomplete. Well, finally, if you can keep the play alive, somebody will come open. That was Adam Warnicke who did. However, Ohm was just unable to find him. But boy, Fran Tarkenton there on the scramble. Good, good one, Al. Adam, Adam Warnicke and Matt Brinkman were open. He's trying to throw left. He steps up in the pocket and he's going to break a tackle and then work back to his left. Brinkman was the guy he had open and just couldn't get it to him in time and just throw a little bit behind Warnicke and almost intercepted by Jay Yost. Yeah, Yost is like, whoa, hey, right in my catchable zone there. So on fourth down, Delfo St. John's will punt. First punt of the day for Alex Recker. It's a line drive that's going to work out well. Look at this. Rolling dead inside the five-yard line to the floor. It'll be down the middle by Tyler Bergfeld. So Alex Recker does exactly what his coach wanted him to there. And uh, hopefully well loud and will start at their own four yard line. And Greg, we haven't seen any penalties today here in the first half. What a cleanly played game. It's very typical. You would expect that late in the year like this. The teams are executing quite well. And uh, you don't want to see too many penalties in a game like this. It just shows you the, uh, the class of these two teams and, uh, and how they're sound fundamentally. Now the Chieftains have all, well they have two timeouts left with 2.05 to go and they have 94 yards. Al, they, with their offense, they could go 194 yards with zero timeouts. Yeah, no problems at all for a quarterback like Tyler Brown and his receiving core. He'll roll to his right this time. Open, and the catch made by Andrew Brickner. First down up near the 20-yard line, and here we go. The Chieftains with that high-powered offense. That's 16 just, on that play. That's just a great throw in his own end zone. Throw that ball's thrown on time and on the money. And, and when they make it look easy like that, it's not. But they, they get some breathing room now, and they can they can be patient with this drive. You know they don't have to throw it every time. They can certainly still run it to Kapelka. Four wide receivers set on first and ten at the twenty. Brown to roll to his left, looking deep for Brickner, and the ball deflected away at the last moment. Nice play by AJ Klausing to break that up as Andrew Brickner appeared to have a step. Great play by AJ Klausing, and really an excellent throw by Tyler Brown. And you'll see Klausing at the last minute just get that hand up. Hmm, that's just a well-executed play on both sides of the ball. That'll make it second down and 10. Back at the 20-yard line of the Chieftains. A minute 40 to go here in the first half. In a 14-14 game thus far very entertaining here for the Division VI crown. Here at Paul Brown Tiger Stadium in Maslin, our first of six state championship games this weekend here on STO. Brown out of the pocket. The ball was deflected that time. I think it was Tyler Hasten who got a hand up. The intended target, Jay Yost. 
And that'll make it third down and 10. That's a big play by Tyler Hasten because Yost was open. They were just gonna go quick play action, throw the out cut on the sideline to move the chains, and it was open. But now they're in a third long situation, and the Blue Jays have some timeouts in their hip pocket. Yep. And the Chieftains are 0 for 4 on third downs today. You don't want to be, I don't care how good you are offensively, you don't want to be in third long. So third and 10 from the 20 for Tyler Brown and the Chieftains. In trouble. He'll go down. Maybe a yard. And Greg, you're saying a call time on if you're Delpo St. John's. There it is. They have three of them. Whistle blows with a minute 26 to go. No gain for Tyler Brown. Good coverage by the Blue Jay defense. Just nothing was open. Uh, great pressure. They just tried to run the front route to the wide side of the field. And Nate Webb's going to force him upfield and then make the sack. And Coach Schulte's got some speed. He ran from the 50 all the way down to the 30 to call that timeout. <laughs> he sure did. And Nate Webb with a uh, well played. As you said, he forced him to the middle and then made the tackle. So a nice defensive play. Both teams now with two timeouts left. So now you have the Belfos St. John's Blue Jays who uh, appear they'll get the ball back and should have decent field position. And perhaps they can get a score before the halftime break. Well, as I said earlier, I, I felt like they would be happy going in uh, tied at halftime, and I'm sure they still would be. But now all of a sudden, you've got to take a uh, advantage of your opportunity here. You just made another defensive stop. You're going to get good field position. They're running the ball effectively and with a couple timeouts in your pocket, you've got plenty of time to go score here. I think they need to score here, given the fact that how explosive the opposing team is. Puts points on the fourth for halftime to take the lead. Here comes Ted and Jay Yost perhaps felt the pressure, shanks that one to the right. That punt will go out of bounds. Let's see where the side just stops at the 31-yard line. So an 11-yard punt. And Greg, you called it. The Blue Jays had timeouts in their pockets. They used one of them. Now they've got a first and 10 at the Chieftain 31. you got to cash in when the opponent makes a mistake. And, um, you know, it's interesting. I want to see the attitude here of Coach Schulte and his staff, if they, you know, how aggressive they're going to play. I mean, obviously they're on the 30. Great field position. Do you, but do you go for seven or do you go for three? And my opinion is get the, run the football with West Alm and put the ball in the end zone. You, you need to take the lead here because of how explosive uh, the Chiefs are, and you know they're going to come out in the second half of the score. Trying to have Coach Schulte for you at the end of this half with Andre Knott. First and 10 at the 31-yard line, backs in and out. Almost will keep on the option. Trying to get outside, now back in. Look at this, broke a tackle. He just keeps the play alive down to the 25-yard line. He was wrapped up by Aaron Kapelka in the backfield. He just shed him and kept going. And Jay Yost missed him again. And Jay Yost is a short tackler, but Wes Alm just is Houdini right now. He's, they can't tackle him. Hurry up offense, second and five at the 26. Alm to throw with time. Got him Over the middle for the end zone. Caught touchdown! Jay Leininger and the Blue Jays take the lead 20 to 14 on a 26 yard touchdown pass from Wes Holm to Jay Leininger. Well, what Paul poise by Wes Holm. They run play action. He sets up in the pocket and he's going to take a shot when he throws it. But Leininger was open and the ball was thrown on time and so much that Leininger almost didn't see it coming and hit him right in the hands. Now, Greg, did they score too soon with 50 seconds to go? Yeah, they might have that, but yeah, you don't want to. If I ask Coach Schulte if he wants to take the points off the board right now, I think he'll yeah. take them. Oh, he'll take them. You got it. <laughs> Here's Jordan Rohde to attempt the extra point. High snap is down, and the kick is up and through. In 21-14, the Blue Jays battle back to take the lead. As we watch this play one more time, Jay Leininger from West Ole. Nice throw and a good catch. Nice throw, great catch off the play action. And they're going to take the 21-14 lead. And you're right, Al, 50 seconds left. You know, did you score too fast? But you know what? Give some credit here to the Blue Jays' defense because they've made some nice stops so far today. And they'll be tested again on this next drive. So 26 yards on the completion for Ulm. That is his 16th touchdown pass of the season. And the Blue Jays. Now with a seven-point lead as you take a look at the scoring drive, just two plays in 31 seconds. 
Looked like Delpo St. John's was the team with the great two minute offense, a great uh, passing game there on that quick drive. Well, you got a hot quarterback right now, Wes Alm. He was banged up earlier, but boy, he's playing with a lot of confidence, a lot of poise, and putting this team on his back right now. And we'll see if Mr. Brown can respond on the other side. So Brody will kick off from the 40. There's Wes Olm. That's right, baby. Or uh, rather, that's, that's not Wes Olm. That's Jay Leininger. Sorry, Jay. Here's the numbers on Olm. 37 yards passing, 106 yards rushing, so 143 yards total offense. He has a touchdown rushing and a touchdown throwing here in the first half. He's getting it done so far. It's no other way to slice it. That was a great first half. And he's, you know, remember, he threw an interception. But boy, has he bounced back since then, come back with two touchdowns. Kick this time will be fielded. That's the 30 on a little seam and got up to the 38 yard line. So with 44 seconds to go in the first half and the Chieftains with a couple of timeouts remaining. Now this half is not over yet. No. I would say the odds of them scoring at this point are above about 60% with two timeouts in their pocket. So the Chieftains now down by a touchdown, back on offense. Tyler Brown in the shotgun. Kapelka will be with him in the backfield. Four receivers in the batter. Brown with time. And through behind his receiver, Andrew Brickner at the 50 incomplete. Well, that's not a throw that you normally see Tyler Brown miss. And did he have a seam with uh, Brickner over the middle? That would have been a big, big gainer over the 50 yard line. Andrew Brickner with the catch today has 82 on the season now. That's a school record. Let's we watch this one more time. Ball just sailing a little bit, and it, it, it's downwind. I'm wondering, Tyler Brown, just a couple chinks in the arm. A couple of balls today, Al. Just, they're, they're not pretty. And I, you don't know if he got his finger hit or what it is, or if it's cold. And trying to set up the screen to Kapelka, and that's knocked away. I think getting his hands up was Nate Webb. Yep. So right now, Delfo St. John's, their crowd's into it, their team's into it, they're up by seven, and their defense comes up with another big play, and I'm on Nate Webb. Nate Webb, is he, he made the sack on the last series, but Chris Pullman had the screen all locked up, too. Kapelka was not open. That play was going to go nowhere. So the Chieftains now, with 36 seconds to go before halftime, face a third down and 10 at the 38. They're 0 for 5 on third downs here in the first half. they got to go back to the crossing routes. They've been open all day long. Delfo St. John's will drop eight in the coverage. Down with time, but nobody open. Now will go deep for Brickner, and incomplete at the 25-yard line. It's Andrew Brickner, the intended target, and I think Tyler Brown's the one to throw it deep as the clock's running down. It would have been as good of a, pretty much as good of a punt if it would have been picked off. You might as well at that point in time, and because you know Brickner can go up and get it, but well defended. The Blue Jays' defense is making play and, and play after play after play. Nobody open really. See a couple guys collide down there, but nothing doing. They're going to have to punt. So Jay Yost in punt formation. Back deep there is Jay Leininger. The pressure just got it away. Coming hard was Chris Pullman. And a great punt by Yost. This one actually will go to the end zone. So a 62-yard punt for Yost, and the Blue Jays will take over at their own 20 with 19 seconds to go in the half. Coleman was about a half a step away from, from blocking that. He was the only guy rushing up the middle. And Tyler Brown, I'm sure a little frustrated right now. He's missing some throws that he should make. He's just seven for 18 here in the first half, throwing the ball and coming into today's game. He was 328 attempts, 237 completions for 72%. So Tyler Brown befuddled a bit in the second quarter. Some of that you got to give credit to the St. John's defense. They've gotten some pressure on him. And as a quarterback, anytime you get pressure on an opposing quarterback, you're going to make them uh, work hard. And they started six for nine, Brown did, and he's just one for his last nine. And here's the running back, Jordan Leininger, with a nice gain. He'll take it up across the 25 to the 27 yard line. But that will probably be the final play of the first half as the clock winds down, and Delco St. John's will take the lead into the locker room here in the Division VI state title game at Paul Brown. Tiger Stadium in Massillon, 21 to 14. 
is the score. And let's go down for a sideline update with Coach Schulte and Andre Knott. Coach Schulte, you told us before the game that uh, controlling Brown would be important for your defense. How happy have you been with that in the first half? I'm very happy. Uh, you know, our first quarter, I should have went, should have, you know, punted on fourth down, but uh, we put our defense in a bad situation. But I think we're doing pretty good on him uh, here in the first half. But obviously, we're going to have to uh, share a couple things up. There's a couple zones are getting to, and we'll make sure we'll make an adjustment at half here. Now, Alm hurt his shoulder in about some midway through the first quarter. He's been almost a different player since. Is this what you've gotten from him all year long? Yeah, um, I, he is a fullback linebacker playing quarterback, and uh, he's just a tough kid, and uh, he's not going to sit out this last game. He'll heal all winter. Coach, we appreciate the time. Great Thank first you. Half. Yep. All right, guys, that's Coach Schultz. He's talking about what his Blue Jays have been able to do here in the first half. Andre, thanks. And uh, Coach Schulte with a great description of his quarterback, Wes Ulm, who had a big first half. Delpho St. John's a seven-point lead. Mark Schwab and Jim Isabella next from our STO studios with a halftime report. Heinegger, also deep there, is uh, Evan Vergai. So 21-14, the Blue Jays lead the Chieftains on an overcast day in Maslin. Talk about a crisp fall day. It's windy, to say the least, as the ball blows and off the tee. the ball blows off yeah. the tee. <laughs> that was great, wasn't it? <laughs> cue the ball off the tee. We'll see what happens adjustment-wise by both teams. The first half really controlled on the ground offensively by the Blue Jays. Tyler Ardner to hold for Jay Yost as the kick is off. It's short, coming up to take. It'll be Jay Leininger near the 15-yard line. Reverse. <laughs> Use the reverse there to his brother. That's Jordan Leininger, and he gets it across the 20 to the 23. So a little uh, razzle-dazzle, and the Blue Jays will start at their own 23-yard line. Did not fool anybody on the coverage team for the Chiefs as they stayed home. So the Blue Jays with a seven-point lead begin the second half with the ball. They'll have a first and 10 at their own 23-yard line. Here comes their quarterback, Wes Ohm, who had an extraordinary first half, 106 yards on the ground and a touchdown. And then throwing the ball, he was just two for six, but he also had a touchdown through the air. There's his rushing stance. As he's won the option to perfection. First down, though, it's a pitch. Bounce it off tacklers, gets ahead to the 28-yard line. Back down to the sidelines we go for a Farmers Insurance Report with Andre Knott. All right, I'm with Jerry Sodnack, Snodgrass. He's an assistant commissioner. Jerry, you're new to this with the OHSAA. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, you know, first of all, I'm living a dream like so many of us involved in high school or interscholastic athletics with working with so many kids. But, you know, I'm retiring. I'm coming to kind of the other side of the coin here a little bit where I was an athletic director for 20-plus years and, uh, you know, seeing a little different administrative side of it, having been a tournament manager through the through my career and uh, quite a bit of a change. You've been in the area of Finley. A guy named Roethlisberger went through there at some point in time. What do you know about that? Well, you know, first of all, he's one of the products of, of this organization. I mean, you know, he played high school sports, of course, and has great fond memories of that. And played in the playoff system as it is. So, uh, was very fortunate enough. I think every athletic director hopes somewhere in their career, or every coach, I was able to coach him, um, hopes they have a player like that somewhere along the way. But a wonderful kid, and again, I I emphasize he's a product of this organization. As we uh, wrap up the fall session of sports, we're going into the basketball season. Tell us some of the things with the Hoop Fan Fest is coming up. How can uh, people out there get tickets and things like that? Well, you know, first of all, tickets are available for our state tournaments since we've gone into the bigger environment, the Schattenstein Center. But we've added some great things with a Fan Fest, even with our alumni bringing back uh, many of our former players uh, to the circle of champions. So, you know, basketball right around the corner. Girls tip off this week, boys next week. So, you know, we're right there, right close ready to go. Al, Greg, I'm thinking I'm going to go with Jerry and go back to Finley and see if I can find a big quarterback. <laughs> All right, you do that, Andre. Thanks a lot for that report. And uh, Delphus St. John's just keeps right on rolling as they now have a first and 10 at their own 38. Brinkman picks up the first down, and they're back to what they were doing the first half, run the football effectively. Pitch the ball this time to Jordan Leininger. Nothing there. The whole for a lot of defense toughens and makes the stop. Adam Kapelka with the first hit for Hopewell Loudon. Justin Holman in there as well. I think the key, one of the adjustments I think that the Chieftains have to make defensively is get their DN and their tackles to really stay at home, to stay disciplined against that option that uh, Wes Holman, Brinkman, and Leininger were so successful with in the first half. 
Now Wes Ohm will go to the shotgun here on second down and 10 from the 38. Ohm with top. Over the middle, incomplete. They're lining with the intended target, covered well by Andrew Brickner, who made the hit simultaneously when the ball hit the receiver's head. Textbook defensive coverage there. And you would expect that from Andrew Brickner, as good as he plays receiver. Well thrown ball, and he hit it up receiver and Leininger. And look at it over the top. You see that right hand wrapped around the hip. That's how that's, that's how that's taught. You could you could maybe argue a little bit of pass interference. That's that's how you're supposed to do it. St. John's two for five today on third downs. There's the numbers defensively for Andrew Brickner, who's a great two-way player. The motion to the left goes Jordan Leinigan. On third down and 10 from the 38. Oh, trying to create. Keeps the play alive. Look at this. He'll get the first down. Look out. He's still not down to the 38-yard line. Wes Ohm, if there's a play that typifies today thus far, that was it. 24 yards on the quarterback scramble. Well, I watched Donovan McNabb yesterday do this in the NFL. And look at what he is doing. He is a determined young man. He's not going to go down. And I can't count how many missed tackles, but nobody up and downfield. So he's going to buy a little bit of time. And he goes left. He's got to go to his right, step up in the pocket. Looks like they're going to get him. And now all of a sudden he's got a couple of blockers. And it looks easy at this point. But Boy, and, he, and he continues to break tackles downfield. Wow. What a run and a great job by the offensive line, Greg. You're right, trying to keep giving him blocks. The fullback, Matt Franklin, and will take it for a couple of yards. And will bring up second down at about eight. A good call there by Coach Schulte and his staff. Uh, not running Wes Elm on that play. Give it to Brinkman and give, <laughs> give Wes a chance to collect the rest. his breath. Wes Elm now 14 carries, 134 yards and a touchdown. You can't send the oxygen unit out to the field, so give somebody else the ball for a player too. Well, you've got to believe Coach Schulte has been very happy. There he is with the effort thus far today of his team. They lead it by seven. And they're driving again. And the opening drive in the third quarter. Second down to call it nine from the 37. Option play on. Oh, just lowered the shoulder there down to the 31 yard line. Jay Yost has been coming up. All afternoon long, making, having to make tackles on Alm in the open field. And normally, Alm will put a move on, but watch him lower his shoulder and run over Jay Yost right here. Oh, my. Now, Colt Schulte said it at halftime to Andre Knott when we had our interview. He said that's a fullback linebacker playing quarterback. And Jay Yost is not timid coming up making the hit, but he was on his rear end that play. Third down and three after a six-yard gain on that last play from the 31. we got to think this is... Four down territory, so two downs to get the first here. Ohm on the option. He won't need the fourth down. First down up across the 27-yard line. Stop near the 26. And Wes Ohm tonight. I guess you could call him the X Factor, Greg. Just too much right now for that Holtwell Loudon defense. Well, he's 6 foot 190, but he's so elusive. Watch the backside. 83 Justin Holm is going to come from the backside after the fake. Look at the two guys making a tackle. And Holman misses backside. Again, another missed tackle, and he's going to get the first down. But he just, but holding that play fake in there to the fullback and Brinkman, you see two white shirts from tackling Brinkman, and then he just keeps it. Five yards on that last carry, first and 10. The Delta St. John's. This is the 10th play of the drive, but before we have it, there's a timeout called by St. John's. There was only three seconds on the play clock, and a fast-moving third quarter here, Greg. We're approaching the midway point, and Hopewell Loudon hasn't even gotten the ball yet. Well, that's the best thing that Coach Schulte and his staff can do is play keep away. Let's and go down to the sidelines now for a Farmers Insurance report. Andre Knott. You know, something that we have to look at right now with St. John's having the ball, with the Blue Jays being able to move the ball right now, if you look at the flag behind me, the wind has changed. Well, of course, it's changed right now when we're live TV, but the wind has changed right now. St. John's is going with the wind right now, and what that's doing is keeping the Chieftains quarterback off the field. The longer they can have this drive go, and if they can put up some more points, that puts the Chieftains in a bigger hole because the sun has gone down. It's got a little bit colder down here. It's a little bit more windy, and with the back game that the Chieftains have to use. If the wind gets too high, that could really change how they have to game plan. And Andre, that's a great point because, Greg, we talked about how one of the keys for today's game for St. John's, they need to keep Hopewell Loudon and their high-powered offense off the field. Well, right now, they're doing that. The best way you could play keep away is to move the chains, run the football, get that clock moving. 
shorten the game and suffocate that Chieftain offense. And that puts pressure on an opposing offense when you're used to having time and you don't have it now. So the timeout over. 21-14 the score. And before we get to the next play, Drive fans, you know, 2009 opening series and six-pack tickets are on sale at any of the Indians' six team shops or online at Indians.com. Plus, this weekend only, receive 50% off replica jerseys with any purchase of 2009 tickets. Don't go away, go to Indians.com or stop by a team shop for more information. And there's Wes Ohm, like a broken record. Another nice game, Greg, uh, that time seven or eight. And uh, the Blue Jays just keep running the football with their quarterback. Well, hope Loudon continues to take away. They took away the fullback and Brickman. They took away the tailback and Leinger, but nobody's on the quarterback, and he's downfield again. And when free safety's got to continue to come up and make tackles, that's not a good thing. He's going to continue to have a great day. Somehow you got to make an adjustment defensively. Seven yards there. Call it second down and a short three from the 19. Once again, it's the eye formation. Leinger's the tailback. Jordan Leinger. Fullback is Matt Brinkman. Home will pitch it to Leininger. Trying to find a hole, stopped after a yard and a half. He'll be short of the first down. It appeared to me how there was going to be a big hole there, but stopped pretty quickly by the linebacking core of the Chieftains. We'll step, put the football on the 17-yard line, so third down and about a half yard to go for the Blue Jays, who on this drive, this will now be their 12th play. And I don't think they mind you know, if, if it takes two plays to get a first down to continue to blow some clock. Three for three on third downs on this drive. Third down and less than a yard. Ohm will keep plenty of room. First down inside the 15 to the 12-yard line. Good tackle there by Andrew Brickner, but Craig, this Hopewell Loudon defense Andrew right now Brickner. doesn't have an answer for that Delphus St. John's option running play. No, they don't, and that's a uh, give credit to Wes Alm. The Hopewell Loudon defense is doing a great job tackling Matt Brickman, but he doesn't have the football. Yeah, Wes Alm's got it, and once again picks up the first line. down before Andrew Brickner can bring him down. Spot the ball at the 11. First down and 10 for the Blue Jays here. They've had the ball for the entire third quarter. Here's their play selection. They've kept it on the ground pretty much throughout, and it's done them well. A couple of yards here for Jordan Leininger, and so take it down near the 10. Coach Schulte has everything he wants right now with a seven-point lead, chewing up the clock in the third quarter, and a chance to go up potentially 14 points and really put Hope out in a, in a position where they've got to come back, which they are capable of doing, but the clock's going to become an enemy for the Chieftain offense. And how about the time they're eating up here? Seven minutes plus on this opening drive of the second half. Second down nine from the ten. Out of the eye formation. Here's the option, Ohm. Here he wanted to go right, had to go back to the left, still got some positive yards. As he takes it ahead to the seven, it'll be third down coming up. But to me, that play defines Wes Alm because there was nothing on the front side there. The play was blown up. The fullback Brinkman was in his face almost because of the pressure defensively. Aaron Arbogast gets the pressure, but he goes backside and takes four guys with him and still picks up four yards. Third down and six at the seven. The Blue Jays are four for four on third downs on this drive, and there's the third down conversions overall today. Give it to the fullback. Brinkman didn't get there. Trying to get outside, but nice job by Hopewell Loudon's defense. Miles Chapman made a good tackle, and it's only a yard. So fourth down, and now Delphus St. John's with a decision here. It appears right now they're going to go for it. Jordan Road is 5 of 6 on the year, kicking field goals. And I'd be, sh I'd be shocked if they didn't there. kick a field goal here. I think they're going to yeah. he's going to let the clock run down and call timeout. As, as a head coach, you know what you're going to do in this point in time. I, I, I'd be shocked. Never say never that he went for it at this point in time, but he's going to burn as much time as possible, apparently, and then call timeout. Rody has a long this year of 33 yards, Greg, so this is well within his range. So timeout is called by the Blue Jays with just a little bit over three minutes to go in the third quarter. We'll take a timeout. Decision time for St. John's. We'll know what that decision is when we come back. Keep it here on Sports Time Ohio.
Here in the third quarter, Delphi St. John's has had the ball for the entire portion of it thus far. They're faced now with the fourth down, and they brought their kicker, Jordan Rodion. Uh -oh. No, he's not on. <laughs> They're going for it. You're right. Uh -oh. I thought he shot it on. No, no, no. They're, they're, he is going for it. This is a bold move. Fourth down and five at the six for the Blue Jays out of the wishbone. Pitch the line of it. And he's close. You might be in. Touchdown. Jordan Leininger on fourth down and five from the six. Got all six. St. John's is within an extra point of doubling up. Hopewell Loudon. And Coach Schulte made the right call there. That's a statement play right there by Coach Schulte. They lined up in an offset there. They overloaded the right side. They, they pretty much said, look, we're going to run to the right side. You're not stopping us. And not only do they get the first down, but they stick it in the end zone and potentially go up 14 points. And they use the unbalanced line there to create the opening. Extra point though is blocked. So we'll stay at 27-14 with 3.05 to go here in the third quarter as we'll take another look at this play and the big push and everybody to the right. That includes Leininger who just backed in and not only got the first down but got the touchdown. And Wes Holmes leading the way in yeah, there. He went and, in for the block as again, well. Though, there's a lot of white shirts in the, in the way and Leininger twists and turns. Looks like it's going to get blown up with the three, and he finds his way in the end zone. Between him and Ulm, they just refuse to go down. Jordan Leininger, his 14th touchdown of the season. Wes Ulm, well, he does everything. He runs, he passes, and he lead blocks as well. Now, this is impressive, Greg. 16 plays, 77 yards, and 8 minutes, 55 seconds. Now, Hopewell Loudon down by two touchdowns with 3.05 to go on the third. Now, as you mentioned during that drive, the clock no longer their friend. It's not their friend. There's plenty of time left for that offense, certainly. But what give credit to the Blue Jays here. They come out with the opening draft in the second half. They shoot a block, block. They do what they do. And they stick the ball in the end zone. So uh, almost a two touchdown lead. This is the end of the But uh, they're playing the game the way they want to play. They're controlling the tempo and they're running their power running game. They sure are running as you take a look at the numbers there on Leininger. That last drive of 16 plays. 15 of those 16 plays for the Blue Jays were runs. And now the kick by Rody. And this one, a pretty good one. It's going to go out of the end zone for the touchback. So the Chieftains will start at their own 20-yard line for their first drive of the second half. Well, it's been a long time since Tyler Brown's been on the field. And uh, last time he was out here, they trailed by seven. Now he trails by 13. He's got to establish some rhythm back. They've got to get some confidence back in that offense. And, and if they can get back, obviously, and score here quickly, you got to we'll have a great fourth quarter. But they got to be careful. They Now they've got to keep the St. John's offense on the sideline because they've been unable to stop the run. You see his numbers, and Tyler Brown just won for his last nine through the air. So basically what you need, if you're Hopewell Loudon, is for Tyler Brown just to be Tyler Brown. That's right. He's been explosive coming in here. A little bit, uh, he's missing some easy throws, I, I believe, that he should make in the first half. See if he comes out hot in the second half. And the Blue Jays keep eight in coverage. Over the middle, though, receiver open. This time a completion to Andrew Brickner. First down across the 35, 17 yards on the pass play. Good pick up right there, play action. They're going to throw the vertical, a little bit of a vertical seam by Brickner. Well thrown ball. That'll get his confidence back. See that ball wobble just a little bit. He's not thrown a tight spiral all day. And again, I don't know if it's the wind being a factor there or a finger, you don't know. Four receivers on first and 10 from the 37. Draw play, Kapoka. Again, he continues his good hard running today. Picked up about six on that carry. Kapoka now with 11 carries for 49 yards and a touchdown. And because you're down by 13, this hurts you a little bit if you're hopeful out and Greg. Maybe you can't use Kapelka as much, but you'd like to because he's had success today. Well, you can. You still want to mix it up. There's a lot of time left in this football game. And I think for Coach Caltrulio here and his staff, important to be very, very patient. They've got an explosive offense. And they don't need a lot of time. But the important thing now is they've got to answer. They've got to put seven points on the board and stay within striking distance. They're bringing a tight end. Matt Bullion to the left in motion to the right. Goes Matt Brickner. There's Kapelka again up to the 45, stopped short of a first down. He needed four, he got two. It'll be third down 
And two coming up. Chris Pullman and company on the stop right there, the six foot, 225 pound sophomore. Came, they, came, the, the, the Blue Jays defensive line there did a nice shot coming off the blocks and stuffing that run. So third down and two at the 45 yard line. Hopewell Loudon has not converted on third down today. I don't think they're used to being in third down. They're so good at right. first and second down, but they've been ineffective today. Quick hitter, first down, that's Yost. Trying to get more. In the Blue Jay territory. Stopped at the 46 yard line. Nine yards on that pass play and their first third down conversion of the day. Tackled by Dylan Dancer. Critical pickup right there. Just going to throw a short hitch. It's a timing route. Got to get the snap and throw it. Yost. Cuts it back inside dangerously. See, he almost came back uh, to not get the first down, but he does pick up positive yardage, and they move the chains. Brown didn't even have his fingers on the seams on that one. It was such a quick throw. From the 46 of the Blue Jays. Play action. Brown on the rollout. Nobody open. They'll keep it and pick up a yard to the 45. Smart play by Tyler Brown. There was nothing downfield. He didn't force it. Very smart play. And a great play defensively there by the corner, the field corner, Brad Hoffman, number 86. He's having a pretty good game. We saw the hit he laid on Andrew Brickner in the first half, but they were trying to run an out cut off a of play action, and Hoffman took away the angle. He got to the outside of Andrew Brickner, and as you said, Tyler Brown did a good job not throwing that football and just tucking it. Picked up a half yard, but instead of forcing the full advice throw. Second down in a short 10. Four receivers set as Tyler Brown is back in the shotgun here. The closing minute of the third quarter. Out pattern. A great catch. Andrew Brickner. Or rather check it. That's Miles Chapman. Held on and kept a foot in bounds right at the first down marker. We'll see if he's got enough or not. And then we're going to have a timeout for a measurement. This great concentration here on this play. And Brad Hoffman, once again, is right on it. You're right, Miles Chapman does an excellent cheating. job getting his hands out, catching the ball away from his body, and bringing it to his body, and ooh, that's close. Well, Brown, going into halftime, was one for his last nine. He's completed three of three here on this drive, Greg, so uh, now we're seeing Tyler Brown picking it up once again. Well, and he needs to, and just needs to get in the rhythm. And in an offense like this, it doesn't take much. A couple completions can give you that confidence back. That's a well-thrown ball there. Look at that. And he's going to be inches short of a first down, so nine yards on the catch. We'll have to call the line of scrimmage the 37, even though uh, it's basically right on the 36-yard line. But officially, that was thrown with surgical precision right on the money. Yeah. Well, this you, you got to figure it's four-down territory. They've got oh, two, without a doubt. two chances to get about 10 inches. There's Miles Chapman's numbers coming in for today. This afternoon, Chapman with that one catch for eight yards. Wishbone formation, and that should be enough for a first down for Hopewell Loudon. They needed about 10 inches, and they got a little bit over a yard. Once again, Aaron Kapelka on the carry. So first and 10 for Hopewell Loudon at the Blue Jay 35. Only seven seconds left in the third quarter. I think they'd love to either get points in this quarter or be very, very close to start the fourth quarter. If they can cut it to seven, or in this case, maybe six, they'd be very, very happy. But they're going to have to find a way out to stop the Blue Jays' offense. They've been unable yep. to do that. Tyler Brown with three wide receivers on first and 10 at the 35. Wants to go left. And that one knocked away and intercepted. It's picked off. Jay Yost tried to tip it away from the defensive back, but instead coming over to grab the tip was Brad Hoffman on the INT at the one yard line. Brad Hoffman's having a heck of a day. 5'10", 180 pound senior, making a lot of plays, breaking up passes. And this time he's gonna get the interception ill-advised. They try to throw kind of a slant and go to Yost. And that's a throw that Tyler Brown shouldn't make. There's double coverage. The play is not there. And he tries to force it in. And that's what happens. Well, Yost, Tyler Bergfeld's the one that gets a hand on that. That's right, Al. Yeah, he tried to knock it away from Tyler Bergfeld. And he knocked it instead to Brad Hoffman. But now the Blue Jays backed up to their own one-yard line with 21 seconds to go in the third quarter. But when you've run the ball like they have today, I'm sure their confidence level, uh, this isn't going to be too nerve-wracking for them. 
And it West Elm just a straight dive play up the middle and he gets near the five yard line. Well, the, the good news is it, it acts as if it's a punt. If you can make the stop, you're gonna get the golf ball back in very good field position. But the Blue Jays are run out the quarter and they have dominated this third quarter. So we'll walk it down to the other end after a four yard game by quarterback Wes Ohm, who for three quarters has played a heck of a state championship game. 12 more minutes to go, plenty of time for Hopewell Loudon to come back. Will they? Stay tuned to find out. Fourth quarter action coming up next. Time Warner Cable has real on demand. 12 more minutes of football to go in the 2008 Division VI state championship game. St. John's, who you would figure would be the underdog coming into today, has a 27-14 lead over Hopewell Loud, and they've scored the last three touchdowns and 20 straight points to take this lead. They have a second down and six here from their own five, and quarterback Wes Holm has been the story, rushing 20 carries, 165 yards, and a touchdown, and he's at it again. This time, only two or three for Holm. It'll be third down and short coming up for the Blue Jays. That time, Miles Chapman came up and made the tackle on Holm before he still picked up two. Let's give you the third quarter stats now, and uh, this one. Through three quarters, look at the rushing yards for St. John's versus Hopewell Loudon. And the third down conversion, St. John's was four for four on that big drive in the third quarter for the touchdown. Well, this third down right here is critical for both teams, especially for the Chiefs, because they need a stop to get field position to hang in this football game. Third down three at the eight yard line, out of the eye. Holm will pitch this time. Leidinger in trouble. He's hit the backfield at the four-yard line. Ran extremely well by the Chieftains. Andrew Brickner cut that one off, and this time Hopewell Loudon saw it coming. Well, they made an adjustment defense, but they finally had an answer for West Holm. He wasn't going to go anywhere. They forced him to pitch, and they had every, every option taken away at this point in time. And now they're going to get good field position to give Tyler Brown another opportunity. So just the second punt of the day now for Alex Recker, who is in punt formation. You get one more look at Andrew Brickner's stop. Brickner will punt from the back of his own end zone. And uh, Andrew Brickner right there deep at the 46-yard line of the Blue Jays. So Hopewell Loudon should get excellent field position. Good snap. Punt is away. Good punt. Brickner back to the 50 to get it. That's the first flag in the game. Three of them on the field. This one will come back for an illegal block, and Brickner's tackled all the way back at the 46 after getting up to the 40-yard line. Can I throw my flag, too? I think everybody you in the may. stadium saw that one. Although I don't think your hanky's yellow, is it? No, no. I believe it was uh, Spencer Kirby, number five, with a block in the back, and didn't need to at that point in time. Brickner had plenty of room to return that. So uh, it's take your pick. There's a... Uh, <laughs> I'm just having my uh, talk at every official. What do you got? What do you got? Well, Everybody's got the illegal block. And all the coaches are going, why? You didn't need to. <laughs> He's got room. Let him go. Why? Yep. So they'll mark it back from the 46-yard line where it occurred, I believe. Well, it's it's not going to matter. They're still going to get good field position. The important thing is their defense made a stop. They, they've finally had an answer for Russ Hall. Block in the back on the return. Against White, first down. There it is. There's the block right there. Guilty as charged. <laughs> yeah, there's not much question. There's, <laughs> just pretty easy. First penalty of the game against either side. Isn't that amazing? It really is. Fourth quarter. Tyler Brown's got to keep his composure right here. Not had the game he probably has wanted to have, but still very much in this football game. He'll go to work at his own 41. And Richter takes the screen up to the 48-yard line. So about seven yards as the Chieftains try to march for two scores. They run that slip screen well, and I'm surprised they haven't run it more. They've both times have picked up a lot of yards. And this is one if he, if right here, instead of cutting it to the left, cut back upfield. He had all the white shirts were behind him. Still a nice game. Four wide receivers set on second and three at the 48. Down again rolling. Setting, throwing, picked off. 
Intercepted at the 45-yard line. It's A.J. Klausing who intercepted the ball in front of Andrew Brickner. And Delphus St. John's again comes up with a big play. Boy, how about the defensive back stepping up for the Blue Jays, A.J. Klausing. Really was a flat defender there. He felt the, the flood route and he stepped underneath it. And Tyler Brown, you can see he tries to zip it in there. He knows it's a tight throw. And Klausing is going to come up with it in, in tight coverage intended for Brickner. He just undercuts him. Another ill-advised throw, and boy, the Blue Jays defense stepping up. A time of possession now. St. John's 23 minutes, 32 seconds. Hopewell Loudon, 14.07. And there's a run on first down. It's Wes Ohm. He'll uh, maybe get a yard. Hopewell Loudon with two turnovers this half. They've only had the ball twice. And there are the turnovers for the game. Boy, Coach Schulte. If there was ever an opportunity for a play action pass down the field, it would be now because the, the Hope Out Loud defense, they've committed to nine guys in the box to try to stop Wes Alm. Second down and nine at the 47. As the Blue Jays from the second quarter on here have really controlled this game. Pitch it. Jordan Leidinger, maybe a yard. So that Hopewell out of defense now tightening up, and Greg, I agree with you. They're daring them to throw the football. Well, they have to make an adjustment. I mean, there's, there's, there's no tomorrow with, with eight and a half minutes to go. You've got to put as many guys up there as you need. And, you know, I'm not so sure that Coach Schulte will throw it at this point in time, but it's there. Play action pass at the post is, is you have one-on-one -on -one situation. About a half yard on that last carry. Third down and a short nine from the 47. With just over eight minutes to play here in the fourth quarter of the Division VI state championship game on STO. On the throw with play action. Timing pattern. He's got lining her open. Got it. Down the sideline. 20. 10. He's gone. Touchdown, Jordan Leininger. And Delphi St. John's takes a commanding lead. 53 yards on the play. The throw the wheel route. They fake it to Leininger in the backfield. Almost to his right. He's going to throw the wheel route to his left. It's a Leininger who's one-on-one. -on -one. It's a great throw. Wes Alt takes a shot at the end of this play. He needed some help coming off the field. Boy, that puts a dagger in the hearts of the Chieftain sideline. 33 to 14, Delphi St. John's with 8.08 to go. But remember, the Hopewell Loudon Chieftains are the easily the most powerful team on offense at the Division VI level in the state of Ohio. A comeback is well within their grasp. It's not impossible, but it's going to be difficult. No, but to, boy, you've got to give the Blue Jays credit because they, they came out and dominated the second quarter, but the second half dominated the third, third quarter, and they've got a chance to go up three scores. Jordan Rooney for the extra point. His last one was blocked. No such problems this time as he splits the uprights. 34-14, St. John's up by 20. Here in the Division VI state championship game on Sports Time Ohio, Wes Ulm has done it all. He's run and he's throwing for touchdowns today and the Blue Jays lead it big. Leindicker, the man, 53 yard touchdown reception from Wes Ulm to give a 20 point margin now to St. John's and Wes Ulm, the quarterback, two touchdowns passing. He's throwing for 90 yards, one touchdown rushing and he's rushed for 169 yards. Talk he's, about the complete package. He, he's stepping up. You need your quarterback to step up in a state championship game, and West Salt has put this team on his back, running the football and now throwing it, and put his team in a position to win. Although, as you said, with eight minutes to go, it's far from over. So St. John's defense will be called upon, and another time here after a good kick, this one out of the end zone. Jordan Rohde got it all. Boy, some big hits for the Blue Jays on defense. They have really done well here today. Well, how about the play defensively of their corners? Brad Hoffman with a big hit there. The interception here by Brad Hoffman as well. And then A.J. Klausing is going to step in front of a Tyler Brown throw. Two interceptions in the second half. And this defense, a very underrated defense, is making plays today. They sure are. 
The Chieftains now need three touchdowns with eight minutes, eight seconds to go. Down 34 to 14. But one thing I've learned, Al, you got to get the first one. Yep, yeah, absolutely. You can get three, but you got to get the first one. And Tyler Brown is throwing for 43 of them this season, including one today. Over the middle, receiver open, got it for a first down. Matt Brickner up across the 30 near the 35 yard line. So 15 yards on the play. Actually, they'll mark it back at the 33. 13 yards on the play. They'll say his knee went down. It'll be first and 10 for the Chieftains there. When you've got to go up tempo right now, it's not a two minute situation, but you got to get your plays called pretty quickly and go and, and force the Blue Jays defensively to get out of their rhythm. Screen pass here. This is Yost. Got some blocking. And uh, ended up with about seven yards. Looked for a moment like that could have gone big. But the Blue Jays defense closed it down. Sooner or later, you gotta, you got to turn that play up vertically. And had a lot of white shirts in front of him, but that, that was well defended by the Blue Jays, keeping uh, Yost in front. That's the important thing for the Blue Jays defense right now. Keep everything in front of you. Eight yards on the catch, second and two at the 41. Kapelka, first down. Up to the 47-yard line as Delphi St. John still needs to be aware of the running back, Aaron Kapelka. Well, you're in a situation where you want to put together maybe a two-minute drive or so. To be down two touchdowns with five minutes to go would be a favorable position given where they're at now. First and 10 from the 47, six yards on that last Kapelka carry. Tyler Brown to the air this time. Another first down as he hit Yost, then he fumbled. Loose ball, Delta St. John's has it. Third turnover for Hopewell Loudon in the second half. They've had three times the ball on offense, Greg, and they've turned it over all three. I believe that was Joel Pullman, number 13 his linebacker position. I'm not sure, I couldn't tell who stripped it, but well thrown ball, Yost is gonna make the catch in coverage and wow, Pullman makes the strip and he gets on it, how about that? Coming from his linebacker position, right here you're gonna see his right hand come in and strip the ball away and that's a good call, that is a fumble and then he jumps on it. Boy, this defense is stepping up in the second half. Well, the Blue Jays have done a heck of a job defensively. There he is, Joel Pullman. Who made the play there. First and 10 for Delphus St. John's with just over seven minutes to go as you look at the turnovers. Tackle. And this time it'll be the fullback, Matt Brinkman, for a few. Matt Brinkman. Actually, they'll say he got a yard. Well, the Blue Jays are, are making the Mac Conference proud. There are two losses this year to Coldwater and Marion Local as you look at Russ Solomon, his numbers for the day. Those are like Greg Fry's numbers back when uh, you were playing no, high school. No, they're not actually. The, the rush yards, that, that's a season <laughs> rushing for me. Don't even compare him to me. I can't do what he does. Boy, is he impressive running the football. I, and, and leadership ability on a day like today to play your best game. Leininger on the carry to the 45. Two more there. It'll be third down and seven coming up for the Blue Jays. But Ahead by three touchdowns, if they can take a considerable amount of time off the clock, it, even if they don't get a first down, it's not the end of the world. It, it's not, but uh, boy, you know, they, they've played this, this game the way they have wanted to from the get-go, and Coach Schulke and his staff need to be commended for an, a great effort both sides of the ball. Defensively, three turns in the second half, but offensively, they are controlling the line of scrimmage. Third down and seven from the 45. Option for Ulm. Escaped for a moment, but he's tackled short of the first down at the 49. Well, Matt Bullion's going to have nightmares about Wes Hall because uh, he's had a dead to rights all day long, unblocked, and cannot tackle Wes Hall. So it's fourth down. Here comes the punting unit. Alex Recker will drop into punt formation. And back deep is Andrew Brickner there for Hopewell Loudon. On fourth down and three. And they need a lightning strike, whether it's a punt return or a big play. Three seconds on the play clock. One second, just get it off. There's fake. the fake. There's Ohm, the quarterback. First down and then some. To the 25-yard line of Hopewell Loudon. So Ohm snuck in as the up back. They snapped it to him, 26 yards on fourth down, and that could all but do it here today. Coach Schulte, what a play call, you know? 
And not only is it a good play, but look at the blocking up front. It's a huge seam. Nobody touches home. And is it any surprise? He's the guy making the play. He's rushed for 173 yards today for Delphi St. John's. Well, that was before that last play. 198. <laughs> now when they add it on. First and ten at the 26. Jason Leininger inside the 25 as Hopewell out and fights for that football. And Leininger has been so quiet today. Came into this game with 13 touchdowns and almost 1,200 yards and had an effective day, but West Alm was carrying the load. But they've done enough of mixing it up to Matt Brakeman at the fullback position and Leininger at the tailback position, but uh, West Alm just has been a tremendous leader today, putting his team on his back. Three yards on that last carry for Leininger, second down and seven here. At the 23-yard line. West Ham will take the play clock down. That's Brinkman. Stop near the 20. Three more yards for the Blue Jays. And now I got to go back to the second quarter because West Ham threw an interception. And then he got hurt. Remember, he hurt his shoulder, had to come off for a play. And since then, he's just been killing uh, the Chieftain defense throwing the football and running the football. But before that, he wasn't quite on. But that, I think that injury somehow has either settled him down or whatever. But since then, he's been on fire. Third down and four at the 20-yard line. Two seconds on the play clock. Reininger, the run. Stop here on first down. Good tackle over there by the uh, Chieftains. Cody Feathers. I really believe going in this game now that uh, Hopewell Loudon was going to be the exception to the rule with a, a pass dominating offense to win a state championship. It's been very few and far between the teams that have been able to do that. If you look at the form, you look for what it normally takes, you got to have a great running game and a great defense. And it's going to be proven again in this game with what the Blue Jays have done on both sides of the football. So fourth down and less than a yard here just outside the 16 yard line. Blue Jays will go for it. Leininger in the backfield, but got forward for the first down. He was tackled there at the 16 by Nick Steve, but he got forward for enough. And the Blue Jays now can start to look ahead to the trophy. And the big reason, this guy, Wes Ohm, the quarterback, 24 carries, 198 yards, passing. 90 yards through the air, two touchdowns, and he just hasn't done anything wrong today, Greg. No, he hasn't. He's, he's been a man. He stepped up when his team needed him, and you see the last touchdown pass to his tailback, Jordan Leininger, which put this game away. There's Jordan Leininger on the rush. Down to the 11-yard line as Delphi St. John's now hones in on their fifth state championship in school history. And now you cannot forget five sophomores starting on this offense. Wes Alm was a junior. That means we could be doing this again next year. Uh, it's, it's with Delphi St. John's. Well, they've been impressive today against a very, very tough Hopewell Loudon Chieftains team. I mean, the Chieftains are a very good ball club. Well, they've been number one ranked in the state pretty much all year long, coming in here 14-0, and and I'm not sure if anybody outside of the Blue Jay camp felt that uh, Hopewell Loudon wouldn't win this game, and me included. A victory formation now for Wes Ohm as he'll take a knee with a minute five to go. And the Blue Jays are getting ready to celebrate their first state championship since 2005. There's Coach Schulte with the headset off. Ladies and gentlemen, we got it done. And it got drenched too. A great coaching effort by he and his staff coming in here. They, I, they immediately they, they won the toss and they deferred. Showed me they had confidence in their defense going up against such a great offense. And hope will allow them. They, they used the fake punt late in the game, and he was fearless. Remember, he went for it on fourth and five from the six yard line, and not only did they get the first down, but they scored the touchdown with Longer, and that just shows the confidence he has in his football team. That should be the final play. The celebration on the sidelines for Delta St. John's 
is about to begin. Players shaking hands now as the final seconds tick off. Time of possession in the second half, Greg. You want a big number? 19 minutes, 37 seconds for the Blue Jays. Four minutes, 23 seconds for the Chieftains. As the clock hits zero, game over. Delphi St. John's is the Division VI state champion in the state of Ohio. All right, coach is ready right now. State Farmers Insurance for this sideline report, Andre Knott. Coach, first and foremost, congratulations. How good does it feel to have the fifth championship for the Blue Jays? Uh, feels absolutely uh, wonderful. You know, there's a lot of people around the state that didn't say we had a chance uh, all year. And uh, I got to give a lot of credit just to our kids. And they, they, they did it with determination. The attitude they had is nobody was going to beat them. And uh, every time somebody said we couldn't, that made, us, that made those kids a little more determined. Before I get to your quarterback, I want to talk about what your defense did today. Are you surprised that you were able to hold this offense to just 14 points? Um, we felt pretty good coming in. Uh, you know, we liked what we were able to do against Data in that, in that playoff game, and uh, we felt our defense was playing pretty darn confident. And, uh, you know, we, our kids just played outstanding out there defensively. You told me at halftime that Wes was like a linebacker and like a fullback playing quarterback for you. He was close to 200 yards rushing. He had about 100 yards, about 90 yards passing. What more can you say about what he did for you? B big players show up in big games, and, uh, you know, his shoulder's hurt, and he dislocated his shoulder. Came out one one play the whole game, and uh, he, he's a man, and uh, he played like it. Talk a little bit about coming from the MAC conference and getting this win for you guys. I tell you what, you know, and everybody talked to us about not having a playoff experience. Well, we get to see playoff caliber teams every Friday and Saturday night in our league, and there's big games, and we bet we were embarrassed twice this year, and that just made us a little bit stronger. Definitely, our league when we we can get outside of our league, it just it just makes us a better team. Coach Schulte, you can go and enjoy this with the players. Thank you, enjoy I will. it. Thank you. Al Greg, this Coach Schulte, he's the winner of Division Six. Uh, I'll try to catch up with Wes Elm in a minute and see if he doesn't tackle me. <laughs> All right, sounds good, Andre. Is uh, Todd Schulte and the Delphi St. John's Blue Jays celebrate the school's fifth state championship, their first since 2005, as they win it today by a final score of 34 to 14. We got to give credit to Coach Schulte, and I was one of the non-believers coming into this game, and I'm a believer now. That's an impressive win. They really controlled this game on both sides of the ball, and he's right. His players stepped up. They were determined to get it done today, and boy, did they ever in a convincing fashion. Well, another key, as Andre talked about, the defense. Uh, Hopewell Loudon had the ball for just three possessions in the second half. And all three times they turned the ball over. That was key. And credit that more to the defense of the Blue Jays than uh, to the mistakes of, of the Chieftains. Uh, a couple of jumped routes and causing a, a fumble on a hard hit. And now it's, of course, uh, a tough time for the Chieftains who have been to the state championship two seasons in a row. 2007, they lost to Newark Catholic. Today they lose to Delphi St. John's. And this football team doesn't lose. Very often, this is their first loss this year. No, I mean, it, it's it's a tough pill to swallow, but uh, Coach Calatrulio and his staff have got to be very, very happy with what they've accomplished in the last two years, and I'm sure it's going to be disappointing getting here again and not winning, but uh, you know what? you got to give a lot of credit to their program because they have, they have had a tremendous year. They sure have. So the Chieftains will accept their second-place trophy here at the award ceremony in Massillon as uh, Delta St. John's. We'll have the winner's trophy in just a moment coming up here on Sports Time Ohio. This is our first of three games today on STO. Coming up, we'll have the Division Four state title game for you from Fawcett Stadium in Canton. 3 o'clock is kickoff time on that one. And then at 7 o'clock tonight, the Division Two state championship from right here at Paul Brown Tiger Stadium. Again, we'll have all the action on STO. And tomorrow, we have the rest of the state title games, Division Three at 11 o'clock, Division Five at 3, and then the Division One tilt tomorrow night from Fawcett Stadium. It'll be St. Ignatius and Elders. So we have plenty of coverage still to give you. This is only the first of six, Greg. And this first game, yeah, it ended up being a 20-point margin, but this was an entertaining game to watch. A uh, very entertaining game. Really, the second half uh, dominated by the Blue Jays with the turnovers, and they cashed in, putting points on the board. And it was a much closer game, I think, than the score showed, but a very, very impressive win for Delphus. And they're about ready to accept the trophy for first place. The 2008 Let's go down Division to the field. Division six state runner-up trophy to the outstanding football team, the Chieftains of Hopewell Loudon High School. Ladies and gentlemen, we brought two teams here from Northwest Ohio and put on a great show. 
both fans. Let's hear it for both teams today. <laughs> Coach Conatrulio, the Chieftains, you hold your heads high. 14 wins on the season, regional champions, you've become a fixture in Ohio high school football. You should be extremely proud. A great effort, and your fans have truly shown their appreciation throughout this game. You should all be extremely proud. On behalf of Commissioner Ross, its board of directors, and the 830 member schools, I am proud to present you with the runner-up trophy in Division VI for 2008. Chieftains, congratulations. A great year. Guys, a great season. Congratulations to every one of you. So the Hopewell Loudon Chieftains, the 2008 Division VI state runners-up. Got a lot of smiles on the faces of the Chieftains and uh, tough on the seniors who had two cracks at it last year and this year. And you know, it's uh, it's tough to, to lose it here today. It's tough when you, you climb to the top of the mountain and you don't quite get there. And uh, trust me, I've played, played and coached football long enough, but I know what that feeling is like. But uh, you know, I think when, when a little bit of time passes, they can look back and know that uh, they've accomplished quite a bit. And now it's time for Delphi St. John's. We won the ball game today, 34 to 14, in the Division VI state championship to receive their trophy. We'll put the seniors out front and the Blue Jays. Ladies really and gentlemen, before today, presenting the championship as we once again trophy. go down to the field. And now, Jerry Snodgrass, Ohio High School Athletic Association Assistant Commissioner, assisted by OHSAA Board of Directors members Mike Richards and Steve Stern, will present the 2008 Division VI State Championship Trophy to the Blue Jays from Delta St. John's High School. Coach Schulte and the Blue Jays, you set out on a mission five weeks ago, one that you might have thought improbable, and I remember talking to you at the regional championship, and I congratulated you and said that you were back. You are truly back. You told me at that time, you told me at that time that you weren't finished yet. You know what? You can say now, we're finished, mission accomplished. <laughs> Coach Salty and Blue Jays, on behalf of the 830 member schools of the Ohio High School Athletic Association and its board of directors, I am proud to present you this 2008 state championship trophy in Division VI. Congratulations. The St. John Blue Jays, the 2008 Division VI state champs here in Ohio, their fifth state title overall, their first since 2005. And today, they, uh, Greg, we talked about it throughout the broadcast. They just they did their game plan to perfection. They wanted to run the ball, they did. They used quarterback Wes Elm. I don't know if you could think that Elm could have a day like he did today in a state championship game. It exceeded expectations, but boy. What a job by that offense and the defense, keeping the Chieftains intact. Well, what I what I was impressed with was the attitude of the team, the coaches coming into this game. It wasn't like that. You know, they're going up against a great Hopewell out team. They didn't come in thinking they could hang. They came in thinking they would win this football game. Let's go down to the sidelines now for a Farmers Insurance report. Andre Nott has the man we were just talking about, Wes Alm. First of all, Wes, I want to say congratulations. Your coach told me after the game that big players step up in big games. How good does it feel to be able to orchestrate this win for your team? Uh, it just it feels great, but I mean, you can't just give this win to me. It's all those guys over there. I mean, they worked just as hard as me during the offseason. We, we call ourselves a family. 
because I mean this team's really close. We really call ourselves a family, and I think that's that's was the difference today is just how close we are. You told me something after the game that meant a lot to you. I said you were you the quarterback last year, and he said, "Yeah, nobody cared because we went two and eight. What does it mean to go two and eight last year and quarterback this team and now come back and be a state champion? It, it means it means a lot. I mean, I, I uh, learned a lot last year going two and eight, and um, this year's just been it's been a dream really. I mean, when I was little, I used to come up here watching 90, 90 teams, and it was just it was awesome. And now to actually have them, a ring for myself, it's, it, it feels great. Take the fans back there that are watching right now. Your feelings when you were laying down there and your shoulder was hurting. Uh, I was hoping. It, I mean, it's been bothering me all playoffs. It hasn't been it hasn't been completely healthy. So I knew the pain was going to go away. It's just I didn't I didn't know when was the thing. So I had to lay there for a little bit because I can't. I, I mean, it wouldn't work for me. But it, the, the trainer Tom does a great job over there for us, and he fixed me up, patched me up, and we were good to go. Start working pretty good after that yeah. play. Uh, take us through the touchdown pass that you had late in the game. You guys had a, just a wheel route that was working for you guys. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Jordan Liner, our tailback, is a great athlete. I mean, he can. I mean, he can really. He can really zoom. So, we we thought the linebacker wasn't going to be able to match up with him. So, we. I mean, we just called. Called coach called a great play. I, luckily, I delivered a pretty decent ball. I got. I got rocked pretty good on the throw. But I mean, it was a great catch by Jordan and touchdown. It won't hurt tonight. Congratulations, Wes. Thanks. Great job tonight. Thanks a lot. All right, that's Wes Elm. Probably uh, our MVP for this game, guys. Uh, I think that would be an accurate <laughs> statement, Andre, to say the least. <laughs> nice job down there with Wes Holm, a game uh, that he'll remember for a long time. The OHSAA football championships are brought to you by Farmers Insurance. Farmers, get you back where you belong. Let's check in now with the final stats for today's game. The Blue Jays of Delphi St. John's uh, really played a, a nearly perfect second half. These are the overall stats. And with 299 yards rushing, Greg, part of 389 overall. But look at the time of possession. That is unbelievable. When it, it dominated the third quarter time of possession, and it got the three turnovers in the second half. Where the defense really stepped up big. A.J. Klausing, Brad Hoffman, and Joel Pullman all coming up with turnovers in the second half to shut down that Hopewell loud and explosive offense. Well, this was just our first of three state championship games today. We'll have three more tomorrow. Here's the schedule. Division four at three o'clock, Kettering Ultra against Steubenville. And then the division two tilt tonight at seven o'clock, Cincinnati Anderson at Sylvania Southview. All good ball games, all close games uh, we expect. So make sure you keep it here on Sports Time Ohio all day for your Ohio High School State Association Championship coverage. So that'll about wrap it up from Paul Brown Tiger Stadium in Maslin. Some folks to thank, Joe Raniak, our producer, our director today, Pat Murray, Andre not on the sidelines, Greg Fry, my partner. Good game, partner. Let's Great do another job. one tomorrow Absolutely. morning. Absolutely. I'm Al Pulowski. We'll send it back to the studios after this for the State Farm post-game wrap-up show. Until I talk to you tomorrow morning, have a good one.